And we are live for a very first edition episode. Take it away, Brian. Yeah, what's up, Living Soil Nerds? Uh, this is another special treat that Marco and I have been working on for literally months, uh, kind of going back and forth, talking about the people that we'd want to um, interview, talking about the ways that we would want to interview those people and stuff like that. And so I hope that you guys see as this show begins to kind of progress week by week, uh, Marco and I have a lot of thought and ideas behind this. Uh, we want to teach you guys and, and bring on guests that are obviously going to teach you on a whole nother level on a variety of different things, not just cultivating cannabis. There's a lot of other things I feel like we as cannabis farmers and we as cannabis uh, people in the industry could learn a lot from, especially a lot of mistakes and something like that. Uh, so when Marco and I first uh, started brainstorming here, uh, one of the first people that popped up in, in our minds, and we were lucky enough that he was able to, uh, to you know, put this together in, in really kind of a short notice for Marco and I to, you know, excited to, to have it running, uh, is Kevin. So uh, Marco, I wanted you to kind of introduce Kevin because I know that, uh, you know, you and I have gone back and forth on, on the things that he's great at. Uh, we're going to obviously get deeper into a lot of things. I, I see you, Kevin. You're also talking about, you know, KNF, Jadam, you know, um, uh, protocols, that kind of stuff, really thinking it through. But then also, you know, giving away Jeff Lowenfeld's books and giving the way of seeds and, and really giving away knowledge. And that's something that Marco and I uh, are going to always keep true to is we really want to promote and, and hopefully continue to build a platform for people that are just giving out knowledge uh, and doing things that are genuine. Uh, so, Marco, uh, you know, hats off to you, brother. I know we're going to talk about a little bit of what we're doing later on. Um, just want to kind of get this show going with Kevin. Uh, but if you, sir, could kind of just, you know, let us know exactly why you admire the man as well. <clears throat> yeah, I appreciate it. Um, yeah, one of the things uh, I've been following uh, OK Calyx for for a while. That's what I kind of that's what I call him. If everybody doesn't know, it's not OKC. It's OK. He's from Oklahoma. And then Calyx is, you know, part of the flower that we all love. Um, but one thing that I've really admired is I've noticed that um, Kevin is doing things like he's uh, doing seed drops, like Brian just said. He's, his flowers look amazing. Um, he's doing things with black soldier flies. He's doing things the natural way. And he's also using uh, some of his own methods within the natural farming with, uh, method. And um, so that was one of the big things. He kind of got me motivated to get back into my soldier fly, uh, black soldier fly larvae. And um, as well as uh, Jadam, he's, he's always doing some things with that and uh, looking for the uh, locally to gather, you know, uh, ingredients for those kind of things. So, um, yeah, that, that's that's one of the reasons when when we started our show, I said, you know, he'd be a, a guy to be awesome to have on. Um, doing a lot more than the average person is, and I think it'd be someone that uh, the average uh, person and, and anyone at, at, at any level uh, could learn from. So with that said, i let you jump in there, Kevin, and, uh, and, and we can just get this thing kicked off. Well, thank you, guys. I really appreciate y'all having me, man. I've watched y'all. I've watched many of you on many shows or both of you on many you know, different shows on YouTube or Insta. And it's a pleasure to be here with you guys. I think Marco, I think um, I was following you on my first Instagram page. I got deleted around 4,000, and then I added an X to OK Calyx, and that was my second name. So all my stickers got to stay the same. It was cool. But I've been following nice. you since that first since that first page. Yeah. Okay. And so, man, I've learned from you for a long time, and I really appreciate it. And I think it's an opportunity to get to chat with you guys and get to know you guys, man. Um, and the rubber duckies, everybody knows that. Golly, those <laughs> things are so freaking cool. I don't know how you make those things. I have no idea how you breed those or anything. That's really cool stuff. So, yeah, it's fun to be with you guys. Yeah, man, appreciate that. And, I, again, we just appreciate that you're going out of your way, um, you know, to, to teach education, not only uh, today on this platform, but on a daily basis. Also, uh, real quick, uh, I got a little stone before the show. I wanted to give a quick shout-out to, obviously, Chad Westport. Uh, we appreciate you, sir. You're going to be kind of doing this as Peter obviously has another child, so three children and a wife. I can't imagine. Uh, probably also doing all that with no sleep. So I uh, just wanted to give a salute to you, sir, that's also going to be here every Wednesday with you. We appreciate that, uh, Mr. Westport. So, yeah, let's dive into this, Kevin. I know that we're on a kind of a time crunch today, so I'm going to be probably rapid firing questions as Go well fast. as Marco. Yeah. So let's kind of get more into your background and that kind of stuff. Um, and, and what you're obviously teaching on Instagram, uh, people kind of 
uh, are, a lot of these uh, viewers are newer to this. So let's kind of break down things. Um, I, I know a lot of guys are using acronyms, but at least when we start off, let's just, you know, let's kind of explain what those acronyms are as well. Uh, KNF, Korean Natural Farming, that kind of thing. Right. So I think one thing that I'm known for the most is composting. And <clears throat> so my family, grew, uh, we owned a fruit market in Tahlequah, Oklahoma. And so my father raised me growing in massive gardens and he didn't teach me KNF or JDM or anything like that. He taught me how to fertilize and how to, you know, how to make good dirt. But we were using fertilizers. And now I look back and I'm like, that those weren't working together. We were trying hard, but it wasn't working together. But, you know, back then they didn't know anything about, you know, myceliums and stuff like that. So I grew up in garden, in the dirt, just raising any kind of foods we could. And I've always done that. And then um, when cannabis became legal in Oklahoma, I think it was 2018, it was on because the, uh, the back story is I, I was a gymnast in high school in my kind of college days. I got injured um, and that led to the long story short of me being addicted to opiates. And on October, uh, see on August 26, 2016, and that's on my OK Calyx sticker. It's on the hat. That date is the date that I cold turkeyed alcohol, opiate, anything I was doing. I cold turkeyed it off, and man, it shot me into deep depression. But I was struggling with depression, anxiety, and all that. Anyway, when when cannabis became legal, I started using it, and it changed my life, guys. And so I'm super duper passionate. And that's where all of this, hey, look at the beans, you know, grow some, try it. That's where all that comes from. I'll go to dispensaries here in uh, Bixby, and when people come in, I'll ask them, hey, you got, do you grow? Because obviously they have their card, and most of them don't. Most of them do not grow. And so I got seeds, and I've got good genetics, and I want to give them to them, and I'll give them my Insta and say, chat with me, and let's, let's see if you can get it going. I just tell them, grow it like a tomato. You don't need the lights. If you put it outside, you know, when it when it was time to put them outside, you put them outside and let it go, man. You can watch it change and into that veg, into that flower, and it'll blow your mind. It blew mine anyway. But that's why I give that stuff out. It, the medicine healed my body. It healed me mentally. I was mentally sick, and it really helped me get back to being a person who can live and be happy and be kind to others and and learn to keep that cycle going because that's the life i want so i'm a very passionate guys and sometimes i think it comes across as woo, he's crazy i'm just passionate because <laughs> i can live happy now and cannabis has helped me you know yeah. god cannabis has helped me and so i'm passionate that's my that's my background definitely i can feel that passion man and uh man you know big ups to you man for for sharing that bro you know and and continue success on your journey i know that's a tough sure. road yeah, man. And I know every day is a is a challenge and you're on the right path 100 percent because what you're doing is awesome, man. And you said even going to do some coaching after this. That's so right. I think that that's a big thing, man, is is not just growing a plant or being the best at growing a plant. Being just all around good person. Man. I, I shout out to you for that. Bro. I appreciate you. Man, I appreciate that. And wouldn't you agree that cannabis allows that lifestyle, an easier lifestyle in kindness? Yes. It helps you to chill. It helps you to have some patience. I have five kids, and then I go and deal with 120 <laughs> kids every week that aren't mine, that are about the same age. But cannabis right. gives you patience. It gives yes. you a, a perspective also. It's like, man, I need to chill out. I was kind of rude. You know, I need to back up a little bit. And it, and it really, if you want to get into a kind lifestyle, and guys, uh, another thing I did, I gave myself seven principles to live by. Self-motivated, teachable, focused, kind, generous, encouraging, and great at what I do. Those are things that happened on that day. When I made that lifestyle change on August 26, 2016, that week after I started saying, man, if I'm going to do this, I'm doing it hard. I'm doing it right. I'm making a change. Mm -hmm. But I took on those principles and I teach those principles at my gym to my kids also. I teach them to my children at home. We live them. We live a life of kindness and encouragement, of self-motivation. I don't need anybody helping me. I mean, I'm sorry. I don't need anybody telling me to get out there and work, but I do need lots of people helping me right but i got the fires in me but all this came from cannabis y'all i'm telling yeah. you it changed me in a good positive way it's a it's a it's an earth medicine that goes along with us so for me it really helps <clears throat> yeah that's um what one thing brian just saw piggyback on that you know everyone talks about the stigma you know oh, cannabis is a gateway to blah 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 i mean you're actually living proof that it, it works the other way you know got I mean? me out 
Yeah. So that's just part of the lies that, you know, we've been told about. Yes. That, you know, so. Yes. Go ahead, bro. Uh, real quick, the viewers are hearing some popping. Is there any chance you have uh, headphones that can plug in, Kevin? I'm probably popping Bluetooth? that pin. No, it's kind of oh, when you're it speaking. Popping? It's from the. Yeah. I don't. I'll be still. But I got I got headphones. And I have a new computer, and it's a total wrong plugging, guys. And I apologize. So these are wireless. But I'll be more still. I'm moving way too much. It's okay if you can't fix it. We've had a, a lot of other issues before, so not not that big of a deal. Just wanted to um, quickly see if it was possible. Thank, thank you for telling me. So yeah. yeah, let's get into more of you know what are your kind of A to Z uh, methods protocols when you when you're setting things up. That's that's what a lot of the newer viewers I feel like they they say they don't really grasp that. Like especially with some of the other shows on the Future Canvas project, a lot of that stuff I've been feedback I've been getting is a little over their heads. So I was hoping maybe for our first show today, we can just kind of like break this stuff down, pretty basic stuff so that they can go and watch. Um, but this is what we really encourage is that you guys go and watch other, learn from a variety of other people. Um, mm -hmm. And you might just need a few names, you know? So uh, that's so, something that I feel like we can talk about. So can I tell you about, then can we talk about composting? And just the basics of that kind of thing. Would you like to do okay. that? Because I think we can get into that hard and fast, and then I'll, I'll probably have to head out pretty soon after that. But composting is simple, guys. And I think that's what's so um, attractive to, you know, the page that I put up. And I don't really put up a lot of composting, but I get some good in-depth stuff. And I, the videos are kind of long, and there's a lot of them when I post them. But composting is easy. And I really think Marco would agree. You can get a bunch of watermelon, cantaloupe, lettuce, some hay and grass and fill a five gallon bucket or a big bucket up. And if you'll let it set outside in the summer, your black soldier flies will immediately already be in there within two weeks. And you'll start seeing the larva, the eggs, and you let it set there for another month. You want to throw a little bit of bokashi on there. You'll start to see it do what it does all on its own and all you got to do is sit there and watch it and enjoy what nature does and that's what has been so fun for me in composting i got these three big old massive composting barrels now and a widow in my neighborhood gifted them to me one day when my son was helping her do some yard work she's like i can't use them anymore i'm too old and i was like you better believe it i'm taking them i started composting i just we threw all our vegetable scraps all of the uh, leaves i could scrape up you know tree bark and i just kept filling them filling them filling them adding some waters crunching them up i would throw um i would throw a lot of bokashi because i like to use that stuff because it keeps the stink down well one main reason it'll hold it big time down um so a lot of bokashi i throw in there and then you know just kind of keep it moist keep it wet let those microbes have some water and let the larva like to you know they don't want to dry they're going to go deep down where it's wetter if you keep it a little bit wet um it'll be hold on just saw that let's see after the, all right if you keep it a little bit wet it will compost faster for you especially when it's hot but composting is easy put your put your food scraps in some kind of container you know outside of your house and let it start to change into dirt in front of your eyes. It'll take four to five months if you'll work with it a little bit and turn it and keep it warm and all that stuff. But then that dirt is what I use to grow my plants. I'll often add some living soil because uh, I have some people that will send living soils and things to me. I'll add a third of that maybe to my compost. But uh, all my outside plants that a lot of people saw, I watered those once. Or Sorry, I fed them once a month. I watered, you know, when it needed it, but I only added more microbes and molasses and things like that just because the compost is so loaded with it already. So composting is a lot of fun. If you just get it started, get a bag of Bokashi, get your five gallon bucket, drill some holes in it, put it outside, you know, keep mixing your food, a little Bokashi and watch what happens. Do you make your Bokashi or do you uh, just go ahead and grab it from somebody? Okay, so I've I've made my Bokashi one time, and I think it was kind of a success, but I've never made it before. And I haven't made it again, but I've had some people send me their homemade Bokashis and fun stuff like that. But no, I would love to learn how to make a, a good Bokashi. Somebody can mm -hmm. teach me, man. Well, that's easy, too, so we can get into that. There you uh, go. Uh, that's well. it. <laughs> <laughs> um, so look, so when you get that, so let's just, I want to get into a little bit more of how you use that compost. I, I've seen that rich, it's really black, rich. If you stuck your hand in there, it'd be like yeah. really gooey and nice, you know? Um, do you ever take, do you make your teas with that or how do you like to get that into your soil or is that sort of your base of your outdoor soil? Yeah, it is the base of my outdoor soil. And it, like I said, I'll probably use two thirds of it and then a third of old dirt 
a third of new living soils, whatever else I want, just to fill the pot up, just to not use all my compost up, really, if I'm using big pots. Um, but then when I make teas, yeah, I'll stick. I don't use a bag. I just dump the compost in. Like I use a massive 45 gallon thing often, and I'll just take a shovel full of compost and throw it in there. And I got a hard bubbler to just churn in constantly. But yeah, it's that easy, man. Shovel, uh, shovel full in a big bucket and boil it up, and that really is about all you need. It will start to foam up. Mm -hmm. Oh yeah, I know that's but, some rich stuff right there. But I do add like um, I'll use roots organic bloom or, or veg it's just because it's easy and i've liked it and i've used it for a long time and then also you I, I, the one thing i always use is uh ultra bio boost i ain't trying to push no products i'm just telling you see it on my page it's the one thing that i do use and i really like it it's super high in bacteria recharge is another good one and i use it also i have a bag of it right now but but um i like the high bacteria just because those cannabis plants i think from what i've read and understand that bacteria is a is a you want more bacteria than you want fungus. Of course, you want the fungus in there, but the cannabis is a short-term plant, and you're going to have a quick turnaround, and you don't have the time in your soil to build fungus networks, right? They'll build, but bacteria will colonize super-duper fast, and they'll start to get into those uh, soil nutrients and start to break them down and a lot faster than the funguses will. And so since cannabis is such a short-term plant, I like that high bacteria, and I think that's correct. And Guys, you help me. That's just well, you know, it goes a stuff. lot of different ways. You know, I've heard it a lot of different ways. I, I lean towards more balance of, you know, bacteria and fungi balance. You know, I, back, it used to be, you know, fungal dominant and some people still swear by that. But I guess I don't focus as much on it because I use so much IMO, which is yeah. um, my fungi is, uh, is off the chain anyway. So um, I always just shoot for kind of balance of diversity in general. Yep. I would do that. Do it. I was just going to say, I feel like in a living soil system, you kind of are more, especially if you're thinking long term, five years, three, five years, something like that. It does seem like the the uh, the fungal ratio seem to take hold as it as the soil basically progresses into the old growth forest or what we're trying yes. to try to achieve um, in an indoor environment. Um, so I do feel like those things change just, you know, just by, based on Mother Nature's doing that. But the style that you're growing, and I hope that we can, you know, kind of show the difference in this, is there's a variety of different styles. The way that you are farming and using roots and, and um, their, your perpetual harvest where you're not continuing to build a soil system uh, makes total sense why, you know, you're fo focused on bacterial only. Exactly. Yeah. So when I grow in pots, it is, it's that high bacteria thing. And, and again, my composting, comp bacteria breaks it down faster than fungus does now, you know. Um, and so it's always high bacteria. I'll use biolag a lot of times. I'll take a five gallon bucket, chop up a bunch of fruit, vegetables, just add some dashes of biolag for real. A few drops will do. And in five days, it's covered in white and it's got, you know, your bubbles and all that good stuff going. Mm -hmm. um, but I'll throw Wait. that in my compost. When you're mentioning bioag, I would I would assume you're talking about the full power product. Are you I talking about another exactly. different? It's it, it comes out as a gold gold color. Uh, no, this is just a big jug Humans. of bacteria and junk. Yeah. Okay. Uh, but it's um, God, what is that the name? I cannot remember. I'm sorry, guys, but anyway, it's high bacteria. So when I use my pots, it's high bacteria dirt, and I think. Things are working fast. I don't know, but it's a high bacteria dirt. Of course, there's fungus in there. There's mycelium always in there, but my growing style in pots is high bacteria. Now, the plants outside in the ground, that stuff, I just cut the I cut the plants at the dirt level, and that's it. I leave all that stuff there. And this fall, I'll be throwing a bunch of pumpkins and whatever else I get. I'll be putting a lot of crop cover on there and just letting that stuff sit there and it'll just sit and eat and as that crop cover grows up it falls over and kind of covers and it works its way down and it's all eaten up by the springtime and it's just yeah you're building dirt. that o layer of your soil that organic layer um yes. so when so your outdoor setup then is that more of like an just an area um where you will just randomly put plants or is it um because you said it's kind of in the, in the soil in the ground yeah, it's the most, it's the place that has the most sunlight. My backyard is right. Yeah, so okay, I got you. So no, it's not right. um not necessarily like a patch of soil that you're kind of uh, building. It's more like well, it is a patch of soil. Yes, uh, there there is a patch along that fence. Where I will grow some along my fence. Uh, where I grow, there is a big cutout. I don't know, probably a 
10 by five area kind of pulled off the fence, you know, and that's right. the area where I constantly grow and I'm, and I'm seeing beautiful mushrooms grow out of there and you're seeing the fungus and molds. And it's a very good, just organic living soil going on out there. That's where I don't get into the roots. I cut those plants you know, right. at, the leaf, at the ground and I just keep it, keep it going. Exactly. Really trying to do a awesome soil out there. So yeah, yeah there's two different like ways. Living soil there. Yep. Hey, sorry to sorry to jump in and interrupt the flow, guys, real quick. Um, okay, Calix, would it be possible to try to get you to switch um, using the sprocket uh, on the bottom that says Cam Mic? Well, we can switch to your internal uh, computer microphone, yeah. and then okay, you can audio. still use. Yep. Yeah. Uh, and you can see. still leave speaker as Bluetooth, so that's your earphones. So you can still use the earphones. So I need to use the. Microphone array. So if you can change on the microphone option, if there's an internal or default selection. Yeah, default right there. Cool, go for that. And then for uh, if you want to leave your headset on under the speaker section, okay. you can okay. still select your Bluetooth uh, as your earphones in the speaker section. Okay. And that's, is this, this is just, uh, oh, go for it. Go ahead and talk for a second there. Is that better right there? Can you hear me now, guys? Am I feeling? Is it sound any better? Is it? Is Still it kind of clicking. A little, little bit of crackly, but uh, we'll roll with it now. If you've got that selected, uh, and if I need to hop back in later, I'll do that. But sorry yeah, to interrupt, guys. Sounded, I saw Peter say this too. It's, he said he thought it sounded like the same source. You want to double check if it. Sometimes it doesn't change. I have to change mine to the nan, nano or whatever this thing's called. It okay or black. Welcome to live TV, Marco. I hear you, man. Yes, sir. Yeah. Any better? This isn't too bad, though. I would. Can That's we try it with uh, a little better, guys? When with I talk? the headphones off. And just your computer mic. Okay. Can you yeah. hear me now? Is it yeah, we now? hear you. Sounds yeah, nice. we hear you. It's a little bit, though. I don't know. Well, I, it's not. I'm. Hey, man, your words are coming through it. You know, I I understand. I can man. speak up a little bit more. This sounds better. <laughs> All right. I think Chad's right trying here. to show you. Yeah, I got the default. Mac. Yeah. And default. Here we go. Maybe that works better. Keep talking. Keep talking. Keep talking. Charlie, can you turn the volume up on this thing? Let's see. Function. Any better, fellas? When I talk to you now, are you able to hear me at all? Yeah, we hear you. Yep. I can I can hear you only through these, so. Okay. All right, man. Yeah. Sorry good. about that. We'll keep we'll, it flowing. Sorry, guys. Sorry, everybody listening, man. We'll make it happen. Yep. Hey, so um, yeah, so, so I'll tell you about the so this, so a lot of these drops that I do, I'm gonna go to Vermont this week. I'm going to go up to Vermont. My wife and I are just going up there to hang out and have fun. It's a beautiful state at this time of the year. But I'm going to be doing some drops in Vermont. And these are some of those strains that I've been creating. And, again, I am not – I do not claim to be any kind of breeder at all. I look up to guys who are breeders, and I learn from them, and I try to do what they do. I just copycat. But, man, I try to take people's strains that I, I have used, I've smoked, and I like, and I've been crossing them. And so one of the main ones is this TK Lady Breath. It's a – Black Label Organics crossed with Family Sea Treats. And um, this is going to be a greasy, stinky, cushy strain. And I've got it in F2s right now. And I'm taking it up to Vermont. And I'm going to be handing it out to you guys. So mm. tag people in Vermont if you know anybody. Tag them OK Calix. Yeah, we will do. You're close. East Coast, you're getting closer, man. Come on I down mean, now. You, I'm getting over there by you, yeah. Uh -huh. yeah. Nice. Have you been getting a lot of feedback if all your drops been picked up? Man, uh, not all of them, but I got a few hanging out there still. But you know what? Okay. People love this, and I love it too. Yeah. It's an easy way to show kindness. And once again, this cannabis industry that we're in, you can grow it. You can grow the medicine that you brag about or that you liked, and you can give it to people. That is crazy if you think about it, especially when I'm thinking you know, opiate world. That's all black market bad stuff. Cannabis world? I can grow this plant. I can really try to make a really stinky one or, you know, frosty, whatever we want. Then I can give it to you. 
and maybe mm -hmm. you can pull those expressions out also or you know you might get something different but that form of sharing and kindness for the one thing that we enjoy is something that is special to our community and i try to expose that and and pass it out and give it to people so that's what i like oh yeah i'm looking forward to your blueberry uh that you're working on man i want that old school blueberry flavor that uh, i remember my brother and i on back in the early 2000s so, like, looking forward to that it's so good you know i started with that humboldt county blueberry muffin and then i've used um uh, blueberry train mac by black label organics and I mix those two together i've got two romulan blueberry uh he has unreleased those are unreleased i won those uh on instagram with doc calyx i won the blueberry romulan and i've got two of those pops and i can't wait to see what those do but yeah i'm just trying to mix those up oh i do have those blueberry breaths i've got six of those growing and i'm just doing a small pheno hunt just to see what pops up out of the blueberry breath Nice. And that, the blueberry bread is Humboldt County blueberry muffin and blueberry train mac black label organics crossed. I love blueberry. I love mm -hmm. you know the more and more that you see a lot of more people a lot of a variety of other people uh, growing Humboldt seeds. Uh, it just seems like they're staying true to their stuff like year after year because uh, a lot of the that blueberry stuff has been around for a long time and then they continue to work it and it doesn't seem like it's watered down or um, you know it still has the taste and the smell so. Um, are there other breeders out there that you kind of want to give a tip of the hat to? Because uh, I know that a lot of, especially right now, as we're going into like October and into November, uh, a lot of people, I don't know, maybe I'm just speaking for Denver, but they all start to grow indoors and they, you know, they all try to experiment. So are there any breeders, certain seeds besides yourself uh, that you feel like they should reach out to and, and maybe try this year? Uh, yeah, don't reach out to me. Uh, reach out to Black Label Organics man i, I uh, pressed some of his death breath holy man it tastes so good and it's okay it's this one terp that i don't know what it is but it's in lilac diesel from uh from um humboldt uh seeds same terp uh but their death breath his death breath is something awesome black label organics and then you got um you got um terp uh, terp underscore fi3 and d he has made that nag champa and i have crossed that nag champa with my tk um lb and that nag champa is super fruity and nag champa <laughs> tastes exactly the way it smells you know, in flower so that's terp underscore fi3 and d uh, those are a couple guys that i'm using right now and then uh it's at terp family fiend. he goes by terp fiend is it terp I fiend think, okay i think we're talking about the same guy yeah it might yeah. be because I've only read it and I never had anybody pronounce it to me. So yeah, hopefully it's Terp Fiend. That's awesome. I got his um, peach rings crossed with Nag Champa. It's called Buddha something, Buddha rings or something like that. But I want to get some of that peach going too. So Black Label Organics, Terp, what'd you say again? Terp Fiend. Yep, Terp Fiend. I think he's stuff. talking about the same dude. He's, uh, he's here in Denver. Very cool. He's been really kind to me, man. He's helped me out. I've asked him all kinds of questions about his strains. Helped me out. Yes, that's him right there. He uses a three, I think. Yeah, and the E, one of the E's. Yeah, right? something like that. I think the E is a backwards three. So yeah, those are some good guys. But Oklahoma, that black label is Oklahoma. Mm -hmm. Yeah, right. Yeah, I think uh, Brandon, uh, Brandon. Russ, you guys know yeah. him. Yeah, yeah. Brandon mm -hmm. Russ. Very yep. kind guy. He's helped me out a lot too. I've asked him lots of questions. He always helps me out. And I know he's got to be busy. <laughs> yeah that guy's oh, yeah. doing it all man so yeah, yeah the fact that he's giving you his time is uh you know kudos to you bro. it's an honor yeah well that's yep. an honor and i appreciate his time there's a you know the, the one cool thing you know that i see over and over again when i'm going back and forth to oklahoma sometimes is the the hunger for real education i feel like uh you know when we first started kind of got the green light here in colorado a lot of us didn't really I don't know there, there just wasn't the ability to i guess f get that education yet um and so i kind of admire everything that you guys are doing out there you're taking up stuff where uh we had a guy on the, on our show on thursdays just a couple of weeks ago it's only been growing for a few years and he could do it a to z um you know that's something that's super impressive and i i feel like a lot of you guys out there just continue to impress the rest of the nation with uh, some of the you know the, at the beginning it was a little rocky i will say but you guys are continuing to just kind of push the envelope in the way that you're educating and educating each other. 
I do see a lot of classes and stuff out there, and um, some of them I think are legit, to be honest with you. Some of them I think are just riding that train. So that's another thing that Marco and I want to really just kind of continue to to pump out there is that free education. <clears throat> yes. yes, I went to a 918 OG uh, class, a hash, hash and rosin class, um, and it was it was so helpful because um, I do a lot of flower rosin, <laughs> And he really showed me what he wants to see when he gets a product because he knows what it's going to look like, you know, pretty much when you look at the flower, you know, OK, if you chop this up, it's not going to come out so pretty. But he's like, this is how you want to manicure these flowers so that you can wash it perfect, you know, or wash it the best you can for that strain. That was just wonderful and eye opening. And I have actually shared I took a lot of notes. I was the only one taking notes and I shared all those notes with a few friends already. I'm like, guys, manicure your plants right before you cut them down. Do this first so that when we wash them, man, we're not going to have a bunch of chlorophyll dripping out of those veins and, you know, things like that. So it really made me a better home grower, and I really was appreciative of having a class like that here in Oklahoma. I remember the days when this stuff was illegal, and I was gorilla growing it out in the woods back here, and no one knew. Not a soul knew. It was me and God. That was it. And I was out there trying to create a good soil, throwing a uh, uh, miracle grow on it. <laughs> I had no idea about any of this organic stuff. I just knew get some good leaf around it, you know, get some good black dirt and throw miracle grow. That's how I was growing it out in the woods. And then when I was able to actually go on YouTube and watch a weed video without thinking somebody's going to catch me and I'm going to jail for it, you know, when it became legal, it was like, we want to know how to grow or, or me and a couple of friends, we were like, we're going to grow and grow until we can't stop growing and we're going to grow so many plants and we're going to grow them everywhere. <laughs> and it, we went nuts, but now we've calmed down a whole lot because <clears throat> now we kind of, now you realize you like, okay, if I want to be a grower, I've got to narrow this down into a strain. I really need to focus on a strain and just see what I can do with a strain. And when you do that, then you're like, okay, I got to know how to take care of this plant because I can't lose these things. All my plants I've got, you know, that's kind of how you're feeling when this first became legal. I can't lose the plants now. They're all legal. So now I got to learn how to clone and I'm going to clone everything. <laughs> and you know, you clone every plant you got and you got 200 clones in a garage and you're like, I don't know what to do with all this. And it just becomes overwhelming. But that's the funness of cannabis. It just multiplies and multiplies itself. And again, it's like that kindness that it produces in you. It multiplies and multiplies. But we had so much fun learning how to grow cannabis in the woods. And then when you have people like, well, like people from Colorado, I had a cousin in Colorado. Um, and he knew people that grew and I'm like, so how do you do it? You know, what are they doing? I see these lights and stuff. And I mean, we really had no idea. That was just in 2018. I had no idea how to grow cannabis. So yeah, there was a knowledge explosion in Oklahoma and we were all so tight. People who used cannabis when it was illegal, we we're tight because, you know, there's only people you share that with. And then you are the only people that start to grow and you keep sharing everything, all the knowledge. So. That's kind of how it happened. I hope it wasn't random. That's how I feel like. There's definitely knowledge explosion, and I like to keep sharing that knowledge because I remember that time when I knew nothing. And if I had me, it would have been awesome, you know? So I'm trying to give me to people who need me, and and that's not saying I'm anybody important. I just can bring you to my level at least, right? I can bring you to my level and then send you on, hopefully. Damn, that was that. was you said some big things right there. And one of the things you said – never tell a soul you know that that's how it was man like people are living in states where you know cannabis can get you locked up and can, can ruin your life can, can lose your job you know what i mean so yes I, I can feel you man since things have been legalized it's a lot less stress you know what i mean and, and the community as a whole is just kind of coming out i think um i, I love what oklahoma's doing i was out there you guys are definitely on it like brian said and uh you know, I feel like my state of Virginia is kind of coming up, you know, next yes. up is one of the next ones. So I just love seeing all that growth, man. And that that education you guys are putting out is key too. you know. Dude, when it goes legal or, you know, all that good stuff in your state, you're going to just people are going to be looking to you to learn how to do things. It'd be so well, we cool. went legal July 1st, so we're did on you it. Go? OK, yeah, I totally had no idea. Yeah, I, you wouldn't so. have seen me had we not. <laughs> <laughs> I understand. So, I understand. 
Yes, sir. Well, it's a good feeling, isn't it, Marcus? And you know, there's like you said, there's states out there still that people are struggling with depression and anxiety, and they're also now having to worry about getting caught by the cops to use the one thing that is helping them take that depression and anxiety away. And it's such a loop that they're played into. You know, they they it's so discouraging. It's discouraging and just depressing. You know, but once those chains came off and legalization was there, I was able to tell my wife, "Listen, I'm going to use this." And she was kind of like, huh, that's a drug, you know, but my lifestyle changed and it spoke for itself. Mm -hmm. And she now is like, yeah, I can't believe what we were told. This is not even, this is nothing close to what we were told, you know, what, how bad it used to be for you and say no to marijuana. Cause it's like heroin and crack mm -hmm. It changed my life. It got me balanced. It lowered my blood pressure. I was allowed to breathe again. You know, I was just could take a breath and enjoy a moment. Yeah. So we, I'm so happy it's legal here and, and hang on guys out there that it's not legal. Hang on. Stay yeah, definitely. With it, you know? Do you feel like there's anything um, that you do that kind of, you know, because I feel like, um, you know, MPK is going to get you a, a plan. You know what I mean? And then when you really want to, you know, supercharge what you're getting out of plants by ways of terpenes and all that, that's when the other inputs come into play. Um, yeah and the extra care and TLC, even all the way through trimming and, and drying and all that. But is there anything like you do that you feel like it's kind of like a little thing that you do that maybe no one else does, or you that kind of, you know, helps you and helps your plants, you know, reach kind of full potential? You know, one thing that I find, and this might, hopefully that this will give a little answer to your question at least. One thing that I find, and maybe other people already know this, and I'm just coming in behind, when my plants are in like week four and f week five, no, let me think here. When I'm in about week six to seven of flower, I find that if I water more, I'll get more white hairs coming out. I'll get a swelled up bud and they start to look fatter. Now, I'm going to put that out there as has anybody else experienced that? And is this just a growing tip that I'm coming on? But I like a little extra water when I'm in flower. That might be one little tip. I like that. I like that. It makes sense. You know, that's a time when they're just start, you know, they're like full throttle, you know. Yeah, uh, it's like, like here we go. A, yeah, it's like a race car or whatever you're doing. I mean, you're full throttle. You need full inputs, light, environment. So it yeah. makes sense, man. Makes yeah. Sense. And now, but, do, you yeah. Pump, do you also bump up inputs or do you kind of just keep the nope. same? Okay. I'm a lazy farmer. I am. I'm lazy. And I, if I can get away with it, I will. If I found that it worked, I'm going to stay with it, you know. And if I can make it better, I will. But I like things where I'm like, ooh, that was good. And so I'm keeping it. I'm keeping that one, you know, in my pocket, and I'm going to use that method. And um, if I find that that terpene flavor is there when I press my flowers, you know, I don't – I'm not going to change the growing method. And I'm kind of trying to speak about a strain. Like when I'm growing a blueberry strain right now, I'm not messing with anything I'm doing. I'm using two thirds of my compost, mostly old used dirt, and then I'm letting I'm watering a lot in veg and just letting it enjoy it. And then when I get into into flower, like I said, I'll I'll start using some roots organic and I'll start throwing in the ultra bio boost with it. Um, but other than that, guys, I really feel like preparing my compost and dirt with heavy microbes, getting lots of bacteria, get the fungus in there. You know, having a dirt that has been developing for a year is beneficial. There's a there's just a lot of you know a lot of nutrient in there, and you know when you get the plants growing, they they just love it. They seem to love it. And like I said, that's maybe not a lazy farmer. It's just a well prepared farmer with my soil. And then I can be lazy as we grow. Uh, that's that proactive sense. farmer. You know, proactive and it's, farmer. Again, this is your style. You know, there's other people that are gonna. Um, not see eye to eye on that, you know, so yes. that, that is kind of the main thing. And remember, if you're this gentleman is a family man, that kind of stuff, those guys don't have the same amount of time as a lot of you guys, uh, especially that want to eventually become a commercial farmer. Yeah, uh, there's just so much going on, especially when you have children. I have two myself, Kevin, and I can't imagine having three more right now, brother. You know, I obviously hope to have that one day. But uh, so, you know, hats off to you that you're educating. You, as far as I see, man, you're putting out posts like every couple of days. Um, yeah, I, I know from my own experience is trying to put that stuff out, building up an account, getting it deleted. You know, I mean, there's just yes. a lot of time and effort that you lose. Uh, but at the same time, man, uh, right before we came on the show, you were talking about Instagram. And I will 
I will truthfully say that I feel healthier not feeling like I have to respond to every single person because the rubber ducky account just isn't as big and I don't get people asking me to ship all day either. So, yeah, um, I, th I think kind of uh, I don't know if you guys experienced on Monday that blackout thing. Yeah. Um, maybe that is what we need more in life is just to be able to find ways to, to un unplug with that stuff. Unplug, blackout, go outside, look at the look at your yard, look at the sky. You know what I'm saying? Learn to enjoy what you're standing on outside. Learn to enjoy what's going on beneath you that you don't even know, right? That we don't see. There's a whole new world going on out there. I feel like it makes you more of an appreciative human being. That, uh, I, you know, for me, it does. It makes me more appreciative looking outside saying, man, things are going on and I have no part of it, right? Beauty is happening outside of me and in my efforts, right? I'm just able to enjoy it. So. Live in the let's, moment. Do, let's live like that. Yeah, Marcos, let's do it in the moment. I agree. Right now. <clears throat> but gentlemen, it's been fun. I want to do it again. And I want to hang out with you guys, talk to people. But I've got to go teach some children how to live life correctly. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Yeah, I can feel you. I wish, wish we could have had you on a, a lot longer. Yeah, um, for sure, man. Yeah, man. Yeah, we I appreciate the time. Yeah, we just scratched the surface, so we got to come on in hard again. We, we'll, we'll schedule something later on. Let's do it. Let's do it. And I'll have better headphones, everyone. I apologize to the listeners. I'll do better. <laughs> yeah, I don't. I actually don't think that was your problem. I, internally, there was some other problems going okay. on. I think it was just it was too high. So, uh, yeah, next time, just uh, we'll make it work. We'll do it. Thank you so much. I had a whole lot of fun, guys. I appreciate it. Guys, thank you, Brian and Marco. Thank you very much. All right. Take care, right. brother. We'll talk. Have a good day. All right. You too. See ya. Yeah, Marco. So let's uh, let's kind of let you uh, talk, talk about yourself, man. Let's uh, let's kind of hear it. I know a lot of people <laughs> that are going to uh, already know a lot about you on Instagram. I feel like YouTube is a whole new world, man. So um, this is just a, a time that I hope you kind of do brag about yourself because you're doing so much stuff that people admire and uh you know, the whole community is learning from you. There's a reason why you and I have teamed up to continue to educate, man. So, uh, exactly. yeah, let's just kind of get to know you, brother, and, and kind of get to know your background and, and where you uh, want to take this show. Yeah, man. Um, you know, I, me, let's see if we want to talk about, man, I guess so many parts and pieces to me. You know, it's hard to just put it all in one. But just talking about what we're doing here, um, you know, I started, you know, growing in the probably the late 90s uh, and pretty much, you know, like everyone always says, it's hard to find information at that time. You know, I actually reached out to, um, I remember like an OG back in the day when I first started, um, George um, Cervantes, um, he, he would like have a disguise on and a wig and he was sharing a lot of information back then. Um, you know, I remember uh, the Cannabis Grow Bible. You know what I mean? Greg Green, you know, that was around 2003, you know, just talking about ways that I got knowledge along the way, you know what I mean? Like the roll it up forums. Um, I mean, like, uh, like Kevin said, man, Virginia wasn't a joke, man. Like, like it was like quiet as kept, you know, people would really get locked up for the smallest things here. It was a really, um, you know, we're a Commonwealth state. So, um, you know, just trying to gain knowledge and, and stay undercover at the same time. And then all the same time, like the Internet wasn't big like it is now. Like You guys have, thankfully, you know, like that's one reason I share information and knowledge, because when I started, I wanted to know more. I wanted to really get in there and grow like you saw in the magazines and stuff like that. You know what I mean? And, um, you know, starting in a closet in a college apartment with a shop light. You know what I mean? That's that's so and not even knowing about the photo cycle, you know, so um, just progressing along the way, man, you know, just learning all those things along the way. Um, Instagram's been huge lately. Um, obviously, YouTube was big with videos and how to's. Um, but yeah, just me, man, I've always been, you know, uh, worked in the corporate world, you know, parallel um to my love of, of gardening and, and, and uh, cannabis you know so um it's always just i've just been someone of two worlds and i think a lot of people have been like that and then unfortunately you know people have had to be forced to live like that you know what i mean good hard-working folks that um 
that you know just because of you know a, a plan and a, and a good plan and something positive like that um you know can be forced to be like you know held in the dark and, and but we're we're out of the dark now you know what i mean virginia went legal july 1st so it's bringing a lot of good people out um a lot of people that you know are just could be your neighbor you know people are interested so yeah we've been getting a lot of interest here um you know currently um you can see i got a tent behind me and this is my microbes workshop um in that tent i'm doing a one plant uh one light it's a cheerio strain by uh my buddy joint custody seeds and i'm in about week six and um actually got turned on to uh uh, chill LED. Um, my brother King Jay Gardens is doing big things. He uh, he's really doing some good stuff with that light, and I wanted to set up a new kind of setup in the shop. Um, so I went with them. Uh, four by four living soil, all built by me. Uh, plenty of microorganisms. Uh, creeping time companion crop. So, you know, I'm all about the living soil. I'm all about the natural farming. You can see like all the, these are all the inputs that I'm always making. All these inputs, you know, go in that tent, you know what I mean? So um, no chemicals, no fertilizer. You know, I used to, um, I know I went through all stages of growing, started out with, you know, soil or dirt, like some people call it before it has any life to it dirt and some probably some miracle grow or something like that um you know through hydroponics you know through aeroponics anybody remember, remembers fence posts um there was a guy named stink bud on the roll it up forums that had a pretty cool system with pvcs and fence posts and uh and two inch net pots um so i went through that phase and then just wanted to be clean overall you know just uh grow as clean as possible, ended up going to, you know, what they call organics and soil and then found natural farming and then just dove on into living soil and just full natural farming all the way, you know, and being someone that has tried every, pretty much every technique, you know, to me, natural farming is the best. There's no other, there's no, no other way I'll grow it other than natural farming, living soil. So I'm sure I rambled on, but, uh, Nah, man, this is your time to, you know, kind of introduce yourself. Uh, yeah, you know, not everybody's on Instagram. So, yeah, right. um, for those that don't know, you know, I also grew up on the East Coast. There's a lot of things, uh, a lot, you know, just a lot of stuff uh, like uh, Kevin was mentioning at the beginning of the show where you just kind of had to have that trust between people uh, and be highly, highly selective in who you were letting know that you were growing or even if you were just kind of flipping things back in the day. Um, so I did want to kind of give a shout out to the beginning of, you know, why we put some of these things together is because there's a highway I-95 uh, that runs from Florida all the way to New York. Um, and for a long time, I felt like that was how a, a lot of us fed our families is taking high risk on that. Um, so I, I just kind of as as we progress in this show, man, I, I hope that we're going to be able to continue to interview some of the people that maybe necessarily never would show their face or maybe we just have them, you know, audio only. Uh, but the stories out there that I feel like we're going to be able to bring you guys um, with this show are going to be really unique. And I hope that you learn from a lot of those things. Uh, there's a lot of mistakes, uh, a lot of stuff that we could talk about on ways to prevent things. Being proactive in life and, and just handling things when you're not in the legal state uh, is also something that I feel like um, exemplifies a, a fantastic farmer is using your head with a lot of that kind of stuff. And we'll get into the nitty gritty, into the details. I'm sure we're going to talk about a variety of things on ways to, to kind of improve those things or uh, smell proof things. Um, but but the main thing I would feel like um, that I, I that everybody would probably give the new generation or the generations that are learning more about farming uh, is to remember to keep your mouth shut. Uh, and I feel like that goes a long way, even if it is a legal state. Um, there's just a lot of, especially in the commercial world, you know, I've worked for people that would allow a variety of other people into their grow each and every single day, kind of in a way, just showing it off, always having pest issues and wondering why. Um, so there's just a lot of things that I feel like you guys are going to learn from from our show on Wednesday as well. Yeah, definitely, man. Like I said, that rule one, you know, just tell no one, you know, that that's for 
that's safety. I mean, even in a legal state, you know, you, you take all, you know, you start a seed in the spring and you cultivate it and here comes October and you're ready to enjoy your harvest. And the six people you told all year were also waiting on your harvest and they get you a week before, you know, before you thought you were going to get yours. So, you know, things like that, it's just, it's not even, um, you know, it's not even about, uh, you know, brag and it's just go ahead and, um, you know, just do it, you know, doing it for yourself, doing things for the right reason. You know, um, it's a lot easier to enjoy uh, the, the finished product with folks. You know, if you just, you know, keep the keep the information, kind of keep it quiet, you know, and and, and, and that kind of thing. But um, yeah, definitely. Um, I think this show is going to be great. I'm looking forward to some great guests. Um, because eventually everyone's going to hear, they're going to get tired of my stories. I know there's a lot y'all want to hear, but I'll eventually tell you, tell you probably more than you want to hear. And uh, so this show is going to be really about the guests, you know, and, and us bringing people that, because really I want to hear from some of these people. You know what I mean? We got some people coming up that I think will be pretty, pretty solid and we'll be announcing that soon. But um, I'm, I'm inviting people on that I want to hear from that inspire me, you know, so. Exactly. I think that's going to be dope and, and same with you, bro. Yeah, just trying to give people a platform that might not necessarily have it, like I was saying. And, you know, some of these guests hopefully will always come through uh, and we'll be able to bring a variety of unique individuals, I feel like, to kind of open your eyes to maybe some of the older stuff that people went through. Um, you know, there's people obviously incarcerated right now for the same shit that we were doing. They might have just got busted 10 years ago, five years ago. I know that I'm very, very lucky, uh, especially growing up in Atlanta and some of the risks that I was taking and running with some of the people that, that I was involved with uh, to sit here and talk to you guys today. And so I want to give a voice to maybe some of those people that might have got caught up in that and now are, you know, kind of changed their life and continuing to move forward. Uh, a caveat with that, though, is, is there's certain places in life I feel like, you know, uh, if you're dirt poor, there's just a, a yearning to find ways to make money. And uh, I, I will never apologize for, you know, doing that in the past. And I feel like that was hustling uh, things and, and ways to, to find uh, ways to flip, basically flip packs, if you will. Um, learning how to do that has taught me a lot of stuff about business. And I feel like that has improved now that we're, you know, doing all this legally, Marco, you know, I mean, it's, it feels good, man. There's definitely a weight off the shoulders um again with the children kind of thing i haven't really been been farming at any r real level uh in probably two years or more so uh it just feels good to kind of still be using my skill set building up something that i personally am now super involved in and, and yes. enjoy on a daily basis uh, but still be able to chalk it up you know with you on wednesdays and and continue to kind of let people see uh, i guess that that veil or that window of uh yeah all right how about what would they say marco tortorial each episode <laughs> you don't get me started I, I, i'll go i'll start rambling on y'all <laughs> well like some of the things that you're you're really f you know focused on is kind of just getting uh oh yeah like stuff explaining. like the inputs that i'm doing and different experiments that kind of stuff people want to get some of that too yeah, like the FAAs, the fish amino acids and that kind of stuff. Do you kind of want to maybe share with that and, and why it takes so long to make that? And what is the, you know, the, the layman's term, not to get too deep into it, of why it takes that long to make that uh, product? Yeah, well, fish AA, fish amino acid, traditionally it's made, you know, uh, with fish, equal weight sugar, and then some IMO or, or soil or anything. You want microbiology in there. So you got to think about it. If you think about a microbe and how small they are, you guys have seen the microscope slides. You guys know that, you know, if a slide you know, is this big and I'm taking a drop of water or whatever I'm testing and putting it on this slide, there's like thousands of things living in this one drop, you know, but look how small they are. So, just for instance, one pound of fish, how long would it take the mic microbes to consume, you know, the, all the nutritional value in one pound of fish? It takes time. Um, so that's why I like to let my FAs go for a year and, and even older. The older they get, the better they are. Like, like some of these things, it, it's not about rushing into it. 
You know what I mean? Like there should be you can be you should be proud that you're working your way through something. Like, hey y'all, look, I started this. This is two months old. It's gonna take another ten months to finish. Like, or I'm six months into it, or I'm eight months into it, and you know, I can feel feel really good about using it. For young folks, take your time. Like, be proud that you just started something. You don't have to try to jump in something and have it finished, you know, fish amino acid in two weeks. You know what I mean? I'm not going to take the discredit that and say no, that's that wouldn't work, but I don't think you're going to get the full value. You're not going to get the full spectrum. And the microbes haven't had time to break all the components of the fish down into your fish amino acid. You know what I mean? I want the brains. I want the skull. I want, I want microbes to be inside every piece of that fish, bones and all, and have pulled out everything that's available in there, you know. And, and you just can't do that in a certain, in a short period of time. Um, that's one. Um, and then I like to experiment. Um, I got I always keep some things going like this here. This is just a seaweed ferment. And all this is is um, ocean seaweed and it's a lacto uh, bacillus uh, ferment. And then I have another one, which is soap nut. Everyone's on the whole saponins craze, you know, the um, wedding agent. Everybody's got everything bubbling up and foaming up, foaming up. And so soap nut is really a good um, and easy um, surfactant full of saponins. Um, and it will foam up nicely. So what I'm doing with this one is just fermenting it. Um, soap nut, uh, sugar, microbes and just a little bit of time in about two weeks um, once the sugar is consumed i'm gonna um, start using that with my uh, foliars and my um, soil drenches so why do you think why do you think more and more people are moving towards that instead of you know back in the day more of the yucca extract was being used as the wedding agent um i think that you know how our society is like it's a kind of a monkey see monkey do you know, someone finds something new and then it may not even be new, but now it becomes new. Um, so I just feel like, you know, and, and, and it's hats off, you know, if you find something that's new and, and, and it works, I love it. Um, but we got to, you know, keep things in perspective. Like my goal, number one, is to help people be able to to grow their food and their plants in a clean way. Like, what's your goal number one? If your goal number one is is uh is money or profit, if that's my goal and I'm not doing things like experimenting and trying it, you know what I mean? I'm just gonna I'm gonna pump it up, and promote it. Um, I think all those things work, Brian, but I think people just get um, hooked on brands and things like that, and kind of it gets it just throws the things the prices get thrown out of whack to me when that happens. Now, you know, yucca always always explained to me that it makes water wetter, right? It disperses yeah. as a dispersant. Um, do you right. feel like it's maybe a little bit better um, using a variety of other things or using, you know, diverse wetting agents, kind of using a yucca? Yes. And, okay. Yeah, yeah, I do. I think that's because that's I got soap nut and aloe is another one. It works really well. And then... Um, there's several of them, man. There's a lot of different ones. Um, a, a buddy just showed me um, Lufa, Lufa sponge. When you wet that, it'll soak right up the same way. So I want to try a little bit of Lufa. I feel like I um, uh, like how Mountain Organics approach is. They're doing several different, um, you know, wetting agents and different surfactants and, and, and to get different, uh, you know, uh, saponins out of them. Um, so, yeah, I think that's key. You know me, I like diversity and everything. So like, I'm not just, my uncle always said, you know, if you're thinking of music, one taste is no taste. You know what I mean? So, you know, I like a diverse everything I do, especially when it comes to, you know, anything with the plants. Cause I feel like it's hard with natural farming to get that, you know, you're never gonna get a one stop shop, you know, just one thing that, you know, one wedding agent that's awesome, you know? Um, to me now, if I use this aloe, Q or whatever else is X, Y, Z is out there. Um, yucca, all that stuff. Um, I feel like you're getting a much more, you're getting a better application. So I, I agree with that. And your, your view on things is, is to foliar feed your plants? Yeah, your definitely. Yes, sir. Um, I love foliar feeds because I want to coat 
the, my entire plant with beneficial biology. Um, going back to the FAA, people don't realize when you foliar with FAA and veg, that's providing an environment that spider mites don't prefer. You know, FAA is good to deter mites before you get them. You know, when they land on that leaf that's got that FAA coating, they're not they're not taking a, a foothold as well because there's a lot of oil in that FAA and in the microbiology. Um, so yeah, I definitely like foliar. Um, no, I have a dehydrated hydrated FAA to powder. Um, I kind of just let it ride out in that liquid form, Cheddar Bob. Um, Shout out to Cheddar Bob. Yeah, yeah, I like him, man. Yeah, he's always having fun. Yes, sir. Yeah, man. So I think just in life in general, it seems like when you're wanting to farm again, I guess maybe this is my opinion. Uh, but if you really want to kind of take the guesswork out of things, you just really need to understand what's known as the soil food web. And then all of the things that Marco is going to teach you and a variety of other things that you see on the future cannabis project is going to teach you is how to improve on that system, how to improve on Mother Nature, ways to maybe speed up certain things, uh, ways to be proactive, like you had just mentioned. Uh, you know, a lot of the things, especially in the soil, the beneficial microbes work in a symbiotic relationship with one another. So as long as you're focused on being proactive, building your worm farms before you ever put a clone in or a pop a seed uh, and just always thinking, uh, you know, maybe a few months out. I think the real farmers that I personally see, they're thinking six months to a year out. Uh, they already have the genetics thought through. Um, and to be honest, a lot of those guys don't farm that way. So I, I feel like um, just the wisdom that you're going to give the audience, man, um, I'm just so happy that we're going to be able to do this together. Me too, brother. I was just thinking on some ideas to talk about. I was we're driving just yesterday or whatever, and I thought about I, I'm playing chess. We're playing, I'm playing chess with natural farming. And by what I mean by that is if you take an aerial view of my property, right? It, it's like a, you can look at it as a chess board. I got a leaf mold pile, you know, that just sits there and gets better every day. Well, inside that leaf mold pile, I did a metal cage filled with comfrey and IMO buried all the way up. So picture an eight foot tall leaf mold pile. I dug down into it buried this cage all the way down. Now that's working. You know, that's like a chess move. That's like a, 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 you know, a position piece that's just sitting off to the side and ready to move into my, into my, into my um, mix here. You know what I mean? I like to look at everything as chess moves. With natural farming, everything isn't fast. Like, you know, some of the faster things you do are to just brew a tea, you know, two day, three day process. You know, those, those are some of the faster things you do. Most things, even if it's a ferment, is five days. FAA is a year. So if you want to get serious about natural farming, start some of those longer term inputs now. You know what I mean? Go to the fish market, start that FAA, even though you can't use it yet. Start, you know, get the process started. You know, something simple, um, just even going to tractor supply or your feed grain store and getting alfalfa, feed grade horse alfalfa. Pile that up on your property. Just let the rain rain on it. Let the indigenous arthropods, you know, isopods, microbes, let everything get into that pile and just let it sit. You know, that's a chess piece over there. Now I'm, I'm positioning things for in the spring. In the spring, I'm going to unbury that cage. I'm going to pop that out. Now it's going to be comfrey and microbiology top dressing my beds. You know what I mean? I'm going to dig into that alfalfa pile. That's a high source of nitrogen, too. So I'm going to be jumping, jump starting my beds for beds with high sources of nitrogen and microbiology. Um, you know, those are some of the things I got going on, like black soldier fly. Um, like, uh, OK, uh, Kevin was saying that earlier. That's a that's a nice piece to have. That's usually a spring to fall piece um, because that's only they're only going to be active during that time. But now that I've had them running all spring and I have this huge, you know, massive um, black soldier fly compost, that's a piece that I'll set to the side and also uh, put that aside for spring. And I also saved all the leachate from that process. So I bucket to that leachate, which is like brown gold that we feed back in. So natural farming, you have to be diverse. You have to hit it from different angles. Um, and as far as a soil, even a living soil and indoor soil, 
I want to see every member of the Soil Food Web in my, like we can go right there in that tent and we'll see every member. We'll see roly polies, we'll see worms, we'll see millipedes, we'll see springtails, mites, feather wing beetles, rove beetles, and then all the way down, if you look in the microscope slide, you'll see every member of the um, micro family as well. And real quick, everything you just mentioned as well is for the newer viewers are all beneficial. So everything that he's putting in there for the most part, they do uh, like rove beetles eat springtails, uh, but we don't really care about that once everything's taken off. But for the most part, everything is working in a symbiotic relationship to break down organic matter. And that really, in my opinion, is the difference in the secret of the sauce of living soil and of improving things with natural farming and just organic growing techniques and protocols in general. Exactly. Well said. Yeah, thank you for um, jumping in there. Um, but yeah, th so I was going to yeah lead in right on into that. And the reason I want to see all those members of Soil Food Web, because they're all important and in balance, they're they're all the everything that the plant needs, like those roly polies, those millipedes, those are shredders. They can actually take leaves and eat them, chew them up and shit them out like they're ready to rock. A worm cannot take a leaf and eat it and shit it out easily, okay, and make castings. So a worm needs the shredders to break it up, and now the worm. So there's a, there's layers to it. So if you don't have each member to me of that soil food web, then things can get out of balance. Some guys only have worms, and I say only worms. You still have all the other things, the mites, the springtails, the, all the smaller microbiology i'm not diminishing that you only have worms but what i'm saying is if you have an overabundance of worms and no soil shredders i've heard where people get their soil gets really uh kind of overcasting i don't know the word for it it gets just too much castings to where it almost is becomes um detrimental to the plant and then they have to add more um you know organic material into it and things of more grit and, and texture to kind of balance your soil out. So keeping the diversity and keeping a balance to me is key. And um, yeah, that, that's kind of my, what I feel about living soil. Now, I know uh, a lot of the things that you mentioned, I would imagine, you know, people have heard before. Uh, if you haven't heard of the Rove Beetle, that's something that I personally use um, in a variety of different things in my life. Um, a fantastic little beneficial insect. Uh, we weren't able to go real deep with Kevin on the Black Soldier Fly. So I was hoping maybe you could explain to everyone why, uh, you know, that in our opinion, that's the next level above the Rove Beetle. Yeah, um, black soldier fly, they're pretty awesome, man. If you do, if anybody does composting worms, and I know a lot of us do those, um, black soldier fly, to me, they're, they're greedier. <laughs> and I say that in a way that um, they literally, I, I mean, I had some extra food scraps. I brought them over here. And literally, once you set them in that bin, it only takes five to 10 minutes for that food to be completely surrounded. For me, I've noticed black soldier flies are larvae are faster with breaking things down. There is a difference with the frass and the end product that comes out. Um, both very beneficial. Um, I like black soldier flies. They do things like they produce um, organic compounds um, that deter regular flies. So if you were to have a black soldier fly bin, it would be predominantly just black soldier flies. You wouldn't have those like carrion flies and some of the, um, you know, the flies which are pests. Um, black soldier fly adults do not bite. They only drink uh, water or nectar. Their mouth parts don't even open, so they can never harm you. Um, the larvae uh, take about 21 days from egg to pupa. And what happens is they just grow that that whole time. Um, I don't have the numbers on like how much, what, how much they eat per body weight and all that, but you guys can look that up. And what happens is if you farm them correctly, everybody hears about insect frass. You know, a lot of people buy insect frass and I bought it too. Um, what, what, what you can do is if you farm black soldier flies correctly, you set your bin up and the larvae will eat until a certain stage, roughly 18 days then they will turn dark in, in color and start getting hard at that stage 
they want to go into the soil somewhere where they can finish that last little bit of um, their uh, transformation to adults and then they'll fly out as adults. So if you set your um, your bin up correctly, when the adults hatch, they fly to light. So you can set your bin up and drill a hole, put a um, like a net over this hole. And then when the black soldier fly adults hatch, they fly into this net and you could actually capture the adults. And then you could actually capture the bodies of the pupae, which are also, um, you know, could be used as, uh, as frass. I don't capture the adults. I like to say, you know, it's just me. I, I'm different, but I say let them go, fly off, populate other places. You know, spread the, that black soldier fly love. And um, so basically, uh, right now the way I'm working those is I'm just letting them go from um, from egg all the way up to hatching, and then I take what they, um, you know, their leachate and use that as a, in a liquid form. And then I also take their uh, the composted uh, material that's left behind and use that as like uh, top dressings and then teas and stuff. Now, what things are you adding to breed them so that they kind of take off and maybe are just, uh, you know, a little bit more vibrant uh, than they necessarily would in nature? Yeah, the, the one thing that um, that time is, is set in stone. What is it? What, what you gain, though, is the ambient temperature, outdoor temperature. So let's just say they take that 18 days until they're going to adulthood. Well, if the temperature's warmer in those 18 days, they're going to be more vigorous. They're going to feed more. If it's colder, they're going to feed, feed less. Um, so the only really things to really speed up with black soldier flies is keeping that steady temperature. And they, I think it's maybe around 85 is kind of the, the key if you want to do an indoor type setup. But the cool thing about them, man, is once you set up, give them food, they just come and like um like kevin was saying it's pretty it's a pretty easy thing to set up um you just want to try to breed if you you know whether you want to harvest the um the the maggots or not and what i'll be doing this spring is i'm going to finish building my natural pond slash aquaponics and then so i'm going to use these black soldier flies fish food and then so now i've got a basically a free source of fish food that i'll create from you know food waste that, that our, you know my family didn't eat so that's all part of like being full circle you know what i mean um one day you know i'll have some people out here will have a fish fry you know and that fish will be all natural fed only from things that came from this farm as well you know that it's all about for me bro is like controlling I'm about control when it comes to what's going in my body and the only way to do that is to make a lot of things and know where they came from know what i mean yeah man well said so when you do have them 85 degrees and in the box are you feeding them extra sources like giving them extra calcium giving them extra protein to to speed up breeding no what I, i'm not trying to speed up breeding but i but what I, I will do uh brian is i will tailor what i give them to what i what i want them to give me back so with that said when i started it in the spring i just filled the entire box up with comfrey so I, I have probably 50 comfrey plants kind of spread all around my property. So I basically took my bin and loaded it all with comfrey. So now when I harvested that, that was only comfrey. Um, and what I do is I do, like I said, I said, I mean, some of these things make sense to some, they don't make sense to others. So I have a pile of that. That's my comfrey, that's high nitrogen. Now I also did one with a lot of fruit, all watermelons, bananas, let them work that save that separate now i feel like that's giving me more of those uh, flowering type nutrients in it so i kind of use a lot of common sense in, in a way like if i want it to be a high flower you know, that i'm feeding them that almost you know so that's how you can kind of tailor tailor what they do to fit what you what you want you know what i mean that makes sense yeah, man, I think it's allowing people to kind of see as you progress, you kind of want to learn more and more about just what's uh, like mother nature, using mother nature to combat mother nature. You know, like when we first all, or at least for me, when I first found out about the Rove Beetle from Jeff Lowenfels, uh, that was an aha moment uh, because now all of a sudden I can breed those with relatively ease uh, and not really have to worry about fungus gnats and thrips and like the little kind of annoying things that are more vectors for disease and 
and other pests than, than really anything other than a nuisance. So just yeah. to be proactive and not have to work with that, I feel like the black soldier fly, uh, that, that's just kind of taking it to the next level of being proactive. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think so, man. And I think it's a, it's a really sustainable, easy way for people to jump in and do some compost. And once you can get over the fear of, you know, oh, that looks gross or, you know, maggots, you know, whatever. Um, once you look past that kind of stuff, man, and see everything for what it is, like, what is that? That is a that is a being that's going to eat something and consume something that's going to help my body ultimately. So, you know, you got to look at those, every one of those little guys as, as your friends, you know what I mean? I had a, um, I had a damn, um, uh, rove beetle got stuck on my, uh, um, sticky trap and I'm like, damn, I was like, fuck, I tried. I took a piece of tweezers and kind of flipped them off and clicked and he fell back in the soil. But one of like his wing was stuck where it wouldn't go back under like, all right, whatever. So. A couple of days later, I'm watering, and every time I water, I like to look at my soil because when you water and you soil drench, everything kind of comes up and starts moving around on the surface. And you know, two days later, I saw this same road beetle with that wing that was still jacked up. He's maintaining, you know what I mean? He's in the soil, still doing his thing. He'll he won't fly away, but um, that's like little things, man. That's like when you're in tune with nature. You know what I mean? Like, I feel like if we're in tune with nature then I'm, I'm a, I'm a soldier for nature. You know what I mean? When I'm out and about, I'm not going to, if I see nature in a bind or I'm going to help out, you know what I mean? I mean, nature, that's, it's, it's kind of something that's hard to explain, man, but you, you gotta be a soldier for nature. You can't just be about nature when it's only for this one plant you want nature to help you grow. You know, if you're going to be about that one plant, and you're gonna be about nature, then, then, then be that way when you walk out in the world. You know what I mean? If you see something that needs a hand or a turtle that's in the road, you know, don't be like, "Well, oh, damn, I'm gonna look like a dumbass if I get out and help this turtle." You know, just stop, go, and if you can in a safe way, help nature. You know what I mean? That's how I roll, man. And it, and if if you got a problem with that, then you know, something's wrong with you. <laughs> So let's break it down even more. So, you know, millipedes are basically decomposers, shredders. Uh, let's kind of talk about what they're doing uh, to add benefit to that system. Yeah, millipedes on the same hand, man. I got um, I get a lot of those um, indigenous right out here. Like I have a, um, I actually set up a box on the ground where I did the bottom of the box is just gypsum. And so what I said was, I said, all right, I want, I want some, I like to add gypsum to my, in my soil, you know, gypsum's a good, a good component. And it's very, you know, it's very, I use it when I amend my soils, but I also wanted gypsum to be able to top dress, but I didn't just want to get powder gypsum and top dress. So I built, I put a box on the forest floor, which is right here in my garden, um, under the trees. And then I fill this bottom of this with about two inches of gypsum. And then on top of that, I used just twigs, just fine, uh, small, uh, Ramile wood, which is like the early wood, um, small tips. And then on top of that, I did uh, leaf mold from the leaf mold pile. And now on top of that, I just throw food scraps. And what's happened is the um, millipedes have come in real heavy. Like, and they got a really, a really neat frass, man. Like, just like worm castings, I get millipede frass that I can visibly see and collect. You know what I mean? So millipedes are doing the same thing. They're just shredders. They're just breaking things down um, into, into one form that something else smaller than them can come in and then break down again. Um, and then ultimately, you know, microbiology um, ends up doing the last step. And that's where the root, plant root and microbiology relationship, you know, start. You know? So um, millipedes are cool. Um, isopods, roly polies are cool. So bugs, they're all shredders. I got this one box, it's just all shredders. You know, earthworms didn't come in there, I think mainly because of the uh, gypsum layer. So no earthworms came up in there, which is cool. I, I may have, you know, kind of stumbled up upon something um, where I could kind of do a shredder box without uh, the help of earthworms. So to me now that's a, another pile or another chess piece, you know, my shredder box compost, you know, that goes over here sets off to the side or, or into burlap sacks and 
it's all about the diversity, man. It's just, you know, I have a worm bin going as well, traditional vermicompost. You can't beat it. It's kind of some of the best things, you know, you can add to your soil. But that's just one piece of it. You know, I like to keep that diversity up, you know. Yeah, I'm a huge proponent, obviously, if you kind of know my background um, on vermicomposting. Uh, once I felt like I started to understand that on a different level, things really changed for you. Um, you're able to farm again more with just allowing Mother Nature, you know, all the buzzwords, you know, trusting the process, just kind of letting go of you as the, the farmer with your ego and just managing the system. And I feel like once you start to manage that system, um, especially I'm talking more in like a living soil type mindset with raised beds, uh, things just continue to improve month after month, year after year. Uh, and I feel like on the commercial side of things, that's really going to be, in my opinion, the only way you're going to be able to compete year after year uh, is to find ways to keep co costs low. Um, when I was farming here in, um, in Colorado, we would have bags of Fox Farm down this huge aisle in the warehouse, and we were buying that every two weeks. I can't imagine what the, you know, the owners were putting into. So just not buying soil and, and learning from you, Marco, on just uh, you know, taking the time to break down using decomposers, thinking ahead, being proactive. That really is the chess pieces that you need. And, and you need that chess type mindset to be a living soil natural farmer uh, at the elite level. Yeah, I agree. Um, I'm actually I'm refreshing. This is you know my this is my workshop tent here, but I'm uh, refreshing a, another bed at, you know at my home grow, and this is a living soil that's eight. It's on year eight now. When I built it, I did not build it horizontal. Um, so one thing that I'm doing now, I'm upgrading that room. I, I'm actually going to put in a um, uh, getting a new light. Um, in, uh, I don't know if anybody heard of uh, science. I got a programmable light raging kush 2.0 um which can really jump in like do crazy things with the light um uh you know spectrum and all so i'm upgrading this room and i did not build that soil horizontal but i'm like man i want to i want to want to do more with this soil but i don't want to disrupt it you know so what i'm going to do is i have an old um <laughs> hydroponic if y'all remember um ebb and flow uh drain uh, flood and drain um, so I have an old tray. What I'm going to do is I'm going to do uh, in that tray, I'm going to do lava rock, sand. I'm going to make that my e-horizon. And then I'm going to somehow, probably with the help of my nephew, get this um, get this eight-year-old soil bag on top of this e-horizon. And then um, and I think that'll give me, it'll kind of take it up to another level. You know what I mean? So it's just things like that, man. I'm always thinking like I love the horizontal soil, um, which is, you know, Leighton Morris. So shout out to him. He, he did a lot a great job describing how that works. And if you all look up um, horizontal soil on YouTube, um, you should see Leighton on there. Uh, his videos dope. Um, so what that's all about is starting a, you know, a, your soil with like in a four by four raised, uh, living soil. You have a gravel layer filter layer on the bottom you kind of have your a horizon which is the me the meat of your soil which is kind of your traditional soil and then on top i have an o horizon and i make my o horizon using a lot of different clay i use three different uh clays in my o horizon and combine with uh acorns the imo acorns um so that's kind of how i make my horizontal soil but um yeah going back to that bed i'm trying to refresh you know, I said I wanted to make this horizon. I thought about should I chop this thing up and take it out of pieces and reassemble it, but I, I really didn't want to disturb that eight-year-old um, network of fungi in there, man. So I'm going to go ahead and um, slide this bad boy on that and try to uh, kind of it'd almost be like a sip bed, uh, you know, uh, bottom water type bed slash you know living soil. So just man, always pushing it, trying something different, man. That's how I roll. What were some of the issues you saw by not having the, 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 like, was it their compaction and that kind of thing over the years? Or what were some of the main drawbacks of not having a soil horizon system set up? Well, you know, Brian, like as far as the, like the product, the finished plant and the, in my, that, that was fine. Um, what I did not like was when I first set it up, it's been so long ago that I used just poly plastic. 
as kind of a tray and I have it setting on a lazy Susan that I built. Um, so what happens is when I water, um, sometimes it'll, it'll get down into this plastic and I just wish that I had more of a gravel type sand filter layer so that so that the bed can kind of wick it back up in a slower way. Um, what will happen is if I overwater, it'll just kind of sit in there and I'll just kind of we'll have to wait a few days for it to kind of drain back or be, re, be reabsorbed. I've never seen anything. I think that's just more me. Um, I want to change that plastic because I feel like it's probably just ready to start leaking soon. And in that process, I just kind of thought, oh, shoot, I got this whole hydroponic stuff that I thought I would never, ever use again. So I wanted to just kind of. Um, you know, kind of just dress it up and make it a little bit more friendly. Now, and I thought about it because of the, the bag is round and the tray is square <clears throat> that I would be able to plant things in each corner too. you know, like of that tray kind of like, you know, not companion, but just have other little stuff growing in there to kind of just further the whole living soil um, you know, system. That's brilliant, man. I mean, you're taking problems and uh, kind of showing off your engineer mind over there, brother. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, well, I, I wanted to share this stuff, man, because I do a lot of, I, mean, I do a lot of stuff. Some of it, you know, a lot of people think it's pretty cool. My wife thinks like it's amazing, and I, and I don't really show a lot, but I want to show like all that, man. Like give people ideas, like oh shit, I didn't think about that. I can, you know, try to make make this existing bed into more of a horizontal without having to take it all apart. You know, so just trying some yeah, different Bob. things. I've met your wife. She's a, a lovely, lovely woman, and uh, it's always great when they uh, support what you're doing. So yes. uh, I know that she knows that we're taking up uh, your time now. My wife, obviously, is getting kind of used to this. So shout out to them for uh, doing, especially on my side of things, uh, take, picking up the kids and all that stuff behind the scenes. Uh, just yeah, appreciate shout out to the that women. we're able to do that. Yeah, Definitely. Appreciate it. Yeah, she's because, uh, man, brilliant, man. Yeah, and your wife's really kicking it up wonderfully, man. I love what she's doing with the uh, rubber ducky and, and, and taking that on. And you have a great wife as well, man. And uh, yeah, man, a lot of guys don't realize, but when you're younger, you know, some guys, if you're not married, you might say, ah, I'm never getting married. But, you know, it, it's really, man, what what makes you a, what makes you able to do a lot of things in life. And I had to learn this because I'm a kind of guy if you if i need like something moved and i don't no one's gonna help me do it i'm gonna go just do it like i'm gonna make it happen so what but what i found out man is like you gotta have a support net network you know like you gotta have people helping you you can't do it all you know what i mean so um shout out to the families and everything man some nights you know my mom still cooks me, my wife and i dinner you know brings it over because my wife has a business and then I may be working late. Um, I got, you know, business as well and I work, you know, at full time. So um, just having a network of, of good people, man, it, it will help you, no doubt. Yeah, man, yeah. I, I feel like a lot of the, the big time people, when they talk about one of the reasons they were successful is when they really started to, to kind of settle down and focus on one woman and, and really build that up. Uh, so yeah, to the young ones out there, listen to the two older gentlemen on that one. I think you'll oh, be yeah. a lot happier in life. Less and headaches. Waste, you kind of waste a few years there when you're not, um, you don't have that kind of older, older guidance or wisdom. Uh, you, do, where you need man. to focus on yourself and focus on your purpose in life and, and build up something for you, uh, and then kind of um, play around or whatever you know find, yeah, find somebody that you want to spend the, you know the rest of your life with find somebody like, like you man uh having another woman that wants to be an entrepreneur i, I feel like that is just um, a unicorn moment i feel like when you're able to, to really build things up so hats yeah. off to you i know you got uh uh yeah i actually I wrote that down right here imo or uh acorns you want to kind of chop that up more yeah yeah um it's almost acorn season so um y'all be on the lookout and i don't want to I, I, i'll just tell this little secret because you don't know where my place is but here's a little tip on acorns um because you say damn how, how are you picking up all these acorns off the ground here's what i found i got lucky i found a street near where i live it's on a turn above the street three big ass oak, uh, oak trees hang above the street. Every year when the leaves drop, the acorns all collect right here in this corner of the street. 
and it's in the it's in the outer corner so when cars drive by they never go out there and run them over so um that's a pretty cool place i can go out there when they start dropping and i can get to, you know five buckets of acorns you know relatively quick so key number one on acorns find you a spot um look for things like that maybe where they drop over a parking lot or sidewalk easy to collect all right so now you have your acorns and um what I do is basically just on with IMO three, I'm using the acorns in place of a grain, my grain. So I'm the same process with IMO three. Um, I do just remember I do uh, a one third of well aged wood chips. I do one third of cracked oats, and I do one third of um, uh, cracked oats and uh, uh, cracked grains, which is a mix. So I, that, that's so those are the you know, three parts I use. And then for IMO3, you water those in with natural farming inputs, and then you let that soil, you know, let that IMO cook over a process of, you know, a week to 14 days, not letting the temperature rise. Y'all kind of get the idea for IMO. Where I use acorns, though, is now I take the acorns and I crack them. And now in place of two of the grains, I use acorns. And then I still have the other grain and I can also use uh, alfalfa at this point. You can mix it with alfalfa. That's what I did last year. So I did acorns, alfalfa, and um, cracked grains, water with natural farming inputs. And then you could either pile that up and do it as a traditional IMO. But what I did, because a lot of people say, I'm not necessarily a lazy farmer, but I like to do stuff easy. I'm like work smarter, not harder. So what I do is um, in the fall, once I make this IMO with acorns, when it's still wet right then, put it in burlap sacks and then pile them up inside a cardboard box, put it somewhere where it won't get rained on and just let it sit. And then what I do is in the springtime, I open that up and now it's basically there's like huge uh, fungal hyphae running all through it. And what also happens is you get a lot of the indigenous um, soil members that we were talking about earlier come in there. Like you get the isopods, roly polies, you get millipedes, things like that come in there and inoculate. Um, so definitely acorns. If if you do nothing else, go collect them if you can. It's a free resource. Um, and always, as always, you know, leave a few behind for squirrels. You know. There really is something special about acorn. Uh, just acorn is in general when you're trying to build up systems. It just seems like one of those tried and true kind of secret uh, ingredients. Man, it really is, Brian. Like um, I live in soil here, man, and this this four by four. There's a lot of acorns in that. And now when I kind of dig in through there, you still see that outer husk of the acorn because that's kind of the you know how when you do avocado tech, the shell never really leaves for, for a long time. So that's kind of like you still see that part of it. And to me, that's aeration. Uh, but the meat of that acorn, for the most part, that's all been pretty much consumed at this point. And this, I mean, it, it, I started the soil and it hadn't even been a year yet, you know. But um, yeah, just that's the that's nature for you, man. If you ever go out in the woods and you see a pile of acorns, you dig in there. There's, I mean, everything loves acorns. You know, because it's, there's so much, it's just full of energy. You know, there's an oak tree in there, you know, waiting to grow. Another cool, I'll, go ahead, bro. I was just going to say, I feel like you almost get like a twofer, if you will, when you go out there, acorn farming is usually right around there. You can also do some mycelium hunting as well uh, in that same spot. Boom. That's exactly right. And the reason why it's, it's kind of a twofold, you know, acorns bring the mycelium and the fungi and it's kind of a cycle, like, you know, like, like everything else is out there. Um, another cool thing to do with acorns, um, since it is that season, uh, red oak, I'm trying, don't quote me, red oak, or it's either red oak needs one year to stratify or white oak does. But if you harvest your acorns, what I did last year, and I'm pretty sure it was the red oaks where, where will sprout right away. When I was harvesting them, I noticed that a lot of them already started sprouting in like November. They had a tip sticking out of them, you know, and I was like, man, that's pretty dope. Um, and it's almost like they were pre kind of, you know, sprouting, ready for springtime. Um, so I har so I pretty much harvested acorns and I said, well, damn, um, I do it. You know, everybody does seed sprout tea. 
you know, SSTs, what most people do, like corn or alfalfa. So I said, shit, let me do one with acorns. <clears throat> so I was able to get these acorns to sprout even more in a jar to where, you know, when I first got them, they were just a little brown tip, you know, and then after sprouting them in two weeks, now it's the tips twice as long and it's green. So basically I took this, um, these acorns, sprouted them and then made a um, seed to soak tea, you know, from the acorns, basically a, a ferment um, to extract the, all those, um, all those uh, growth hormones and stuff out of the acorns as well. So, I mean, ac I mean, you could spend, you know, just being a natural farmer, acorns will get you can get you in the game real quick. You know, and they're about to drop soon. Um, acorns, leaves, pile up leaves. Even if you have a yard, get as big of a pile as you can. Just let them sit. You know what I mean? You'll get it'll end up being some really good, you know, goodness to, to, to go into your soil. And the things I make, like all these things, I use them in my indoor living soil too. You know what I mean? Like when I harvest that comfrey out of that big pile. I'm going to take some of that and that's going to top dress my four by four indoors. Like to me, there, there's no difference really. You know what I mean? That's the way I treat the indoor and outdoor. Yeah. Do you want to kind of dive deeper into leaf litter? I feel like that's something that I unfortunately didn't really understand or comprehend what someone had given me until later on in life. Um, and kind of maybe kind of progress on why leaf litter is so important. Yeah. I mean, it, it's really important. Um, leaf litter is what you got in leaf litter is basically that you're holding the the, the, um, the roots of a forest floor in your hand because it all starts with the leaves that are dropping you know leaves and sticks and things dropping from a, from above um, you know when you dig down into a, a forest soil it's soft the first several inches you know depending on how old it is and the reason it's soft is because basically all those leaves have dropped and then now all that microbiology is going in there and eating those leaves up. Um, leaves is just like, um, you know, like in a soil, if rock is the base to me, you know, kind of your soil, you know, leaves are kind of like start out your, uh, start out your forest soil, you know what I mean? Like they're the first component really um, that gets used up. So I like leaves, they're a great mulch um, and they're a living mulch. So when you, if you ever see leaf mold, you'll know it because it's, it turns a distinct, you know, white. Like you could be digging through a leaf pile and you pick up a lot of black, you know, slimy black leaves. And then all of a sudden, boom, you reach a layer and then it turns white and mycelium. And it's just threads of fungi all through that. You know, that's all that's all that, you know, sapphire fights, as Leighton always talks about, you know, you got saprophytic fungi and bacteria. You know, that's the fungi that's starting the process. And by saprophytic meaning they use organic material, they feed on it, they break it down. Um, so leaf leaf mold is definitely key, man. Um, that's awesome for, for natural farming. It's good to have on deck. Um, always plenty of worms under your leaves. You know, if you need to collect worms, if you wanna, you know, a lot of people buy worms. They're like, I'm starting this worm bin tomorrow. I'm going to buy me all these worms. Well, you could also start, you know, indigenously collecting your worms, you know what I mean? Um, worms are all around you, millions of pounds of them, all in the ground. You know, um, ways to collect them is just, like I said, looking under leaf piles, you know, lay down cardboard. You guys know how that is. You, you lay down cardboard for a week and lift it up, and then it's like a whole another world under there with worms and, 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 and the micro uh, microorganisms that came in. Um, so, yeah, leaf mold, you know, leaf piles are key and valuable um go out in the forest and look for this stuff and like a lot of people say you know when you go out there and you take things you know take something back you know when i go out and i collect acorns uh, when i collect them off the street that's just where i got them from but when i go out physically out in the forest and i'm foraging um you know i feel like i'm taken from nature i like to bring something back and what i'll do is i'll bring some imo i'll bring you know some acorn imo or some comfrey and you know, people say, well, that doesn't matter, but that goes back to that's, you're still being a soldier for nature. You know what I mean? You are, I am, I am nature. So I'm not going to go out and take something and not give it back. You know, like Bob Marley said, you know, give a little, take a little, give a little more. Like that's the part people don't understand. Like 
it's you gotta give more you think it's about the taking it's not it's about the giving back you give twice you're gonna that one you get back is gonna be bigger than those two so think about that like with everything you do give a little take a little give a little more like, just don't be give man we're giving right now we're just giving some time i hope hopefully somebody's watching you know hopefully this stuff's kind of you know clicking with folks but um you know so yeah that that's kind of how i feel about leaves man i i, I like it. you know i really like it. yeah that was well explained marco appreciate it man and i feel like just a, a cherry on top of that is if you are going out of your way you're kind of in a way getting time or buying time if you will um, so if you're wanting to build up your soil system this winter indoors, uh, right, like Marco just mentioned, now is the time, October, uh, early November. Yeah, now's the time, man. There's all kinds of goodies out there for you. Uh, leaves are going to drop. I got a friend. I got to reach out to him. I haven't talked to him all year, but it's my leaf guy. Last year we hooked up. He runs a local uh, company that they, um, they vacuum up all the leaves around the area. And um, so I'm going to be looking forward to him to, you know, bring me more leaves, you know, making those relationships, you know, like, like far natural farming is seasonal. Like I'm starting to really, and it, and it becomes awesome when you, when you make it through like a cycle, like, I don't know, like how, how everybody looks at time, but I look at time like this. And it, it's just my way of seeing things like during it. If I look at a day to me, a day is like a dot. If I look at the week, I look at the week in a line monday sunday to monday or whatever that's the week if i look at a month it's a square and when i look at a year i look at it as a circle and i look at it as a quarter it's like a clock you know what i mean and so like brian said brian buying time um everything's seasonal i know when this time of year comes i start looking for my persimmons i start looking for my acorns i start it's cooler now. It's easier to manage an IMO pile when it's not 110 degrees outside and high humidity. Like now's the time to really start getting into it. Like now, like to char, start start your fires. You know, start charring your things. People are out there hunting. I got hunters. They're gonna be bring me deer bones. You know, I'm gonna make WCAP off deer bones. Um, you know, y'all be creative. Like as you get older, like. It, like like it becomes seasonal like you know and there's just certain things you look forward to man and it it really kind of slows your life down in a way and and just lets you take time you know like you can't only just right now you can't just look to the springtime you gotta you gotta be in this moment and use things that are available to you now so when spring comes you're loaded you know you're loading your gun right now you know i'm loading up all these inputs and things i'm just loading up and then when spring comes and my plants are growing or even when my indoor needs stuff, I got it. I'm, it's already on deck. Um, and that's all about playing chess, you know, looking ahead. If no one, if anybody out there hasn't played chess, it's all about thinking ahead. And everyone knows you, you hear that as cliche, but it really is. It's like, what's, what am I going to be doing in, in, in February, March, April? Look, planning your months out, you know, planning, planning your time out. And natural farming kind of makes you do that, you know. If you get behind, it's hard to catch up, you know, so it's really where if you're behind, you just have to start right then and, and move forward. A lot of things you can't catch up on. But like you said, leaf mold, acorns, it really jumpstart your biology, because not only with those acorns, I'm not only just getting the acorn, I'm getting all the biology that's in it and on it, you know, like that's all diversity. You know, when I built this soil in here, um, when I first built it, I went a month. Well, it sat in a tarp for two months. And then when I put it together and put it in my tent, I didn't plant anything for a month just because I knew that microbiology and everything's going to be off the hook. And it was like that tent, the walls of that tent would be sweaty, wet, like every time I unzipped it, just from the respiration of the, all the microorganisms that were in there. See, I over I like the overload and then they'll work themselves out. But one cool thing I noticed was and I sent it to Brian, I had um, found a little colony of orange uh, springtails in there. And they were just on the underside of an acorn when I went in there and just checking on the soil, you know. So like, you know, every let people say oh, everything's been discovered. Well, in this world, 
we're still discovering things. We're still finding new techniques. We're discovering what works, what doesn't work. And um, like I mentioned before, I think lighting is going to be a new a new uh, wave. You know, photobiology. Not that it's a new thing or a new concept, but now they're creating lights that can emulate you know sunrise, sunset. Um, low, low reds, you know, deep reds, you know, um, the new light can emulate a HPS if you wanted it to, it can emulate like it. So they're, they're doing so many things with these spectrums that I think combining that light and then now maximizing our diversity of our soil and inputs, I think now that could be the next step in, you know, just pushing the plant and the terps, you know, even farther. And so I'm looking forward to really like diving in some more with this lighting and also want to bring some folks on that can explain it a whole lot better than myself too man so some things you know down the road like like i'm using this show for me to learn too guys you know what i mean it's not just um you know don't think i'm just a talking head like i i like to learn and, and i can't wait to talk to some people we got coming up yeah man i feel like before we even popped on the show it's this is all about continuing to learn mm -hmm, definitely uh, pH dechlorinated. Uh, yeah, I mean, I do dechlorinate it. Some people will say and swear it doesn't matter, but I use rainwater um, as much as I can. And if I don't, I use an RV filter on an inline hose. Um, and the purpose of rainwater is while that rainwater is sitting out there, it's collecting microbiology. You know, there's microbes in that water, you know, and they're, they're not bad. They're just another piece of the puzzle. Um, so I don't pH water um, and I don't uh, pH my uh, solutions when I make soil drenches or foliars. I do check for um, strength, just EC, just to be sure I'm not burning anything uh, with, with the strength because some JLFs are like super strong, like they'll just roast your plants if you don't watch it. Um, and then I let the soil buffer it. Like I have, you know, this my volume of soil is such that it'll buffer the pH. Like, you know, I haven't had any issues growing with that method. Um, and so, yeah, I don't, I don't, I don't really factor bother with pH very, very much. And I feel like that's because you're allowing the soil food web to take hold. You're, you're managing the system instead of always trying to think, all right, what's going on with the plant? I need to do this. I need to do that. Uh, once you said to trust the process, uh, yeah, that, that is kind of the um, one thing I feel like a few years ago people didn't honestly believe is that you would be able to reuse your soil and then not have to ph anything uh, especially to a hydroponic farmer and, and, and aeroponic farmer that sounds super foreign almost probably ridiculous especially back then uh when people were were speaking on this but like you had mentioned mountain organics ian he's one of the first people that i saw that was continuing to do things and then shout out to steve cantwell i feel like he's another one of those that is continuing to prove uh, to our cannabis community that this can be done and this can be done in an indoor environment as long as you understand everything from A to Z. And I think that's the main issues with a lot of some of the living soil stuff uh, is that they just don't understand everything. They they uh, have a Ferrari, but they don't understand how to drive a stick. Yeah, yeah. It takes some time, man, to kind of get your mind wrapped around it because being hydro, going through that phase, you remember how it was. Like, it's all about you know, cleanliness, you know. You Get you know, anything in your water, you know, get funky, you know, and it would it went real quick. I mean, you drop a leaf in your reservoir, and the next day, you know, a couple of days, your stuff could be funky, you know what I mean? So, um, yeah, it's like build ups that would happen on that, yeah, that was yeah. annoying ass thing, yeah. yeah. Remember, you'd like touch stuff, and it'd be just this film of calcium residue, just you have to clean all this stuff, and yeah, I, trust me, I don't want to relive that because pests were bad in that phase too, you know what I mean? So, so like, and it's crazy, man, living soil, like, and it's hard to believe, but pests, and I'm gonna knock on wood, as I always do, but pests, man, I don't really sweat pests. I don't have any issues, you know what I mean? I I, I do preventative things, of course, IPM. Um, when I build my soil, um, I water in different things, obviously BT, knocked out fungus gnats. I buy uh, beneficial nematodes. I buy um, beneficial mites, some things I do, I do buy just when I start out because 
the the fungus gnats and everything can just be just it's off the chain like when my buddy um when i first set this up it had only been a couple weeks and i you know i know how it goes so i was just letting everything work itself out and he came over we're just looking in there and he's like damn man i hope i don't have all these bugs like this you know so i was like no man this is you know a little different than what you would be doing a little bit you know i'm doing a little bit more um advanced but it just took a little bit of time for the for the bugs and everything to get balanced out once the nematodes in there and everything started eating and uh bt started regulating the fungus gnats and then now you just like any other grow you just see a couple gnats here and there no big deal um so yeah you just got to kind of get used to it with living soil man it's like you got to embrace things that you think stink and you think are funky because there's always there's a good funk and there's a bad funk like there's a rancid and then there's a sweet funk to it like a cheese you know what i mean you're never gonna say you know you know so cheese and our nose can tell the difference so like as you're going through with living soil um it's just embracing the life and, and, and things like that and part of the life is funk you know bacteria when bacteria grows that's that's you're smelling funk you know that's why that's why you smell it so um you know, it's that kind of thing, man. Just taking your time with it, with living soil, trust in the process. You know what I mean? Feeling like you're, you have amended it well enough to where it'll get you through and then start making your amendments so that you can start adding, adding things to it, you know, as you go. Now you had mentioned advanced, you know, having a living soil bed eight years ago, brother, that is uh, highly advanced, right? So how, how did you understand how to do that back then? And who were some of the mentors that you were kind of learning from uh, back then as well? Well, I'm, I'm, with my background, Brian, I, I went to college. My major was forestry and wildlife management. And so I stuck that out just for a short period of time. And it was the problem was, you know, when you're young, you think, oh, I want to do this. And you do want to do that. But the problem is with that, with the education system, a lot of times you're spending time learning things that in your mind you're thinking, man, I want to get to the meat and potatoes of it. But you got to learn so many things before that, which really in real life, ultimately, you probably don't even need. Um, that was a bit discouraging for me. So I ended up switching my majors, but I, I did get a, I was always a kid of nature. So I always had a, a understanding of, you know, soil or the earth, you know, growing plants and food. My parents had gardens and stuff. Um, but the crazy thing is once I got into um, wanting to grow cannabis, somehow my mind was tricked. So I forgot all about microbes and I went straight to bot, you know, bottles that they sell you, you know, the three bottles or whatever may be green, brown, red. So I kind of got, you know, they tricked me at work. I forgot all about the natural world and how uh, soil biology and all that works. Well, going through hydroponics, that's great. You know, everybody knows how that is. Big ass plants, they grow fast, wonderful. Well, and you learn more. Damn, man, what am I? whatever's in this bottle is ultimately going to my body. So just kind of a light switch clicked on, damn, why am I even trying this? Because, and you remember, they also used to say, you could never grow quality cannabis organically. Like, you know, everyone used to knock it like, well, you might not grow, you know, it won't be as good, or you won't grow as much. And I will say, sure, yield may be lower, but with hydroponics, all you're doing is growing a bigger plant and stretching cells making a weaker plant ultimately um so you know that that's kind of you know so then i'm you know got to lean towards um, doing it the organic way and i'll say man i'll bet you the book that really turned me on to it brian was um was teaming with microbes man um i got that when it first came out uh jumped on that and that's when it started clicking you know what i mean that's when i really uh started clicking with soil uh, went back to soil uh sub sub cool super soil um was definitely a big uh, turning point because then now it took me to um building the soil and putting it together you know and then the, the term cooking when that when that was damn this really does heat up oh why does it heat up oh shit, microbiology okay boom so now that's when it all just started kind of going in that direction and then um so yeah super soil was always big and just saw um, on some of the forms man like i said back then man it was tough um 
I don't even remember some of the accounts I used to follow, but like, bro, it was so sketchy back then. Like, like I was literally like nervous even creating an account on this web, like on this forum. You know what I mean? And I had this for, I was on this forum for probably five years. Never ever made one post, comment, or talk to anybody. Only reading. Only you know. And if they they said something I really wanted to know more about, I'm like, shit. Now I gotta. I kind of gotta wait. You know, until somebody else comes back and responds, or go out and try to seek it on my own. Um, so that's kind of you know where the progression went um, from hydro on just clean eating, taking care of my body, you know, needing to be here for my family, it's putting that all together into one big package. You know what I mean? And, and that's it's kind of where I, how I ended up here, man. Probably missing a lot of things that happened along the way. Um, but I'll, I'm bad about remembering things until I kind of think about it or somebody reminds me. So, I, I mean, it'll, I'll think of some more later. But that's kind of the progression, man. Yeah, I feel like for a lot of us, man, uh, having a few of those like stable type books uh, to understand, um, Ed Rosenthal books, I remember were like out there as well, a lot of the yes. high time stuff. Uh, but at the end of the day, I felt like, you know, no disrespect to Ed Rosenthal, but I just didn't really find enjoyment farming that way. I felt like it was such a chore, continually mixing stuff, messing up the pH, then pouring a pH down, and then, you know, especially at the beginning, messing that up. And Back then the pH up. Yeah. Man. <laughs> I mean, when I was first getting into man. this stuff, we didn't even know how to build the tent. So, I mean, there was just so much stuff that we had to learn. And like you had mentioned, there's a place here in Aurora, that out where I live, um, that's called the Big Tomato to this day. And when we first went over there, everybody would say like, hey, man, my tomatoes, I'm having problems with my tomatoes and veg. Uh, you literally weren't allowed to say anything yes. like that. So uh, yeah. I, I know we feel like probably and, and sound like old people saying this, but you guys have no idea how fantastic it is to be able to openly talk about this kind of stuff and not be just on a forum to have videos where you guys can see in real time. I know Peter's had a, a ton of uh, fantastic farmers on the show showing their grows in real time. I know yes. we've had that on our show as well. I mean, there, there's a reason why not everybody is willing to do that. You know, on Instagram, you can take a picture of your grow in the corner uh, right. and look fantastic. But what does the other parts of the room look like? So, again, shout out to everybody that's a natural farmer, that's a living soil farmer that's showing uh, that you can do this in real time and you can do this successfully year after year. Uh, yeah, another guy, uh, Josh Steensland, is another guy that I admire that's always kind of shared with people and showing people in real time. Uh, what his grow looks like and why he's continuing to improve things. I just I can't say enough of kind of the, the old guard there, um, which you're one of. And, and now we you know kind of get to pick your brain um, now that you're since July 1st can kind of come out of the of the woods here. Yeah, definitely. Yeah, man. I remember, bro. It's like you wanted to, you needed to know an answer to something in a shop, and you literally like are like tomatoes, peppers. You had to do it. You know what I mean? And I had a friend, man, another another guy um, I grew up with uh, from a county over. I met him later and um, I actually kind of got him, showed him how to get going. And this was probably in the 2000s, man. And um, he was he was a fast mover, like, you know, one of those guys that just wanted to want to let me get it going. I must just get set up, you know, that kind of thing. So he runs down to the hydroponic shop local. And buy, fills up his truck, buys a whole room of shit. You know what I mean? He's rocking. On the way home, man, the fucking agents followed him, man. And and they busted him for that, for buying all that shit and ran up in his house. That was probable cause for them to get a search warrant on him. So, like, it's, it's not a joke, man. It's like, y'all young bucks, be thankful, man. Like, you know... You got it easy, man. You guys can talk about the shit. You can post whatever you want. Like it's pretty much, you know, just think about having to do it and you could and you're in this dark closet. You can't show anybody anything. <laughs> you know, it's only for yourself, you know. So um be thankful that like people came along the way. Like that man got locked up, you know. He's he got he came, he got locked up on some other stuff too. And he's home now, thank God. But you know, there's people like locked up for doing nothing more than wanting to grow plants like we all should really be thankful and respectful that you know that they're happy that you can do it, you know what i mean and i'm here to like help people um 
help people grow, man. I, I want to see everybody be successful. And I'm um, speaking of that shout out to my buddy Garrett Gardens, man, and his daughter Daisy. Some good people. If y'all know Garrett, man, uh, Garrett uh, gave me this hat, showed me love. He's a real good dude, raising his daughter, man, doing it natural farming style in the desert. So I uh, just want to shout my buddy Garrett out. Yeah, right on, man. Especially, uh, you know, family, family focused companies, entrepreneurs, all about that for sure. Mm -hmm. No doubt. Well, we're hitting that two hour mark. Do you want to kind of, because uh, unfortunately the guests had to dip out, we could kind of uh, maybe, you know, go through some questions and maybe wrap it up a little bit earlier uh, than we would have if the, we had the full guest. Yeah, I'm cool with that, man. I'm, uh, I know everybody's about tired of, you know, hearing me talk. And, uh, but, uh, yeah, yeah. We, <laughs> but uh yeah i want to get into some other shit too so yeah we can just kind of wrap it up man i think this was a great show man i'm i'm just kind of feel my wheels are turning as we're talking man yeah. i just can see where we're gonna be man i think it's gonna be wonderful i hope people really are loving what we're kicking out here yeah and again to reiterate we've been going back and forth on this for a while so uh, i hope that you guys see in time that we've really put some thought into this yep definitely what are those water roots feeder roots Uh, I'm not, I'm not, I'm not that, I'm not familiar that there's a big difference in that. Um, if there is, I need some more education. Um, but, uh, yeah, I'm not, I'm not up on that. Maybe you know a little more, Brian, like feeder roots, I guess, going way deeper versus, um, kind of surface roots. And I bet that makes sense. It kind of does, but I, I'm not up on that. Yeah, I mean, for the most part, cannabis is obviously growing width-wise, not depth-wise. And I feel like when you first start out, there's some even some pot, like, uh, it's not an air pot. It's like a, they got some holes in it, but they're way deeper. Uh, and I personally have used those, and I can tell you that um, you're, you're just not going to be successful or uh, you're going to have a lot of issues to be successful uh, using deeper pots instead of wider pots. So we always try to educate, you know, if you can, 25 gallon minimum, I feel like is where you want to start that. And if you're a, uh, you know, a healthy, strong uh, young man or young woman, I feel like you might be able to push that up to 35 gallon. Uh, remember that those roots and everything, that's the soil system, but that's also the stomach, if you will of everything that you're building out. Um, and if you wanted to really see the beauty of that as a stomach system, start to use kefir and drizzle some of that on there and see what the plants do. That's why I, I drink that stuff every morning. Kombucha, another thing, just fermented things in general mm -hmm. will really improve not only your plant life, but your gut health as well. Be a healthier individual overall. I feel like you're gonna be a happier individual as all well, uh, once you start to improve your health. So uh, that's something that I, I, I see a lot of guys that I admire, man, and they, junk food and they you know they yeah just, <laughs> I, I feel like that's maybe why you're a little upset you know i mean that's my body would you know i've been uh, off that for many many years now but if i'm out you know driving to kansas for a rubber ducky show or something and there's nothing really to eat and you got to grab a wendy's uh you remember what what that food makes you feel like and what it does so yeah exactly uh, quick that's, a, there. that's another thing uh making your own stuff you know inputs like a lot of that stuff like i love my vinegars like you said gut health is key man i accidentally swallowed a freaking mouthful of bio uh, biochar leachate yeah, yesterday, so bro. oh my so god impressed. and look you know how if you ever siphon anything like a lot of times you'll siphon it and, and it'll, you'll, it'll catch and you'll just like it'll blow all out literally the whole glow went right down my throat like no oh, coughing no nothing i'm like fuck, you know so uh gut health must be good <laughs> What, what do greens say? When is the best yeah. time to use enzyme? Uh, green, hey, greens goddess. Um, she's a great grower, by the way. Um, yeah, I she's doing. and indoor. really been learning this last year. I feel like putting yeah, in indoor time. and outdoor. Good yeah. stuff, greens. But um, I use them all the time. Uh, pretty much every watering, I'm using um, either I'm using usually biology microbes and some kind of feed or FPJ. It just I change it depending on what stage the plants are in. If the if I'm in veg, I'm all about comfrey, nettles, dead nettle, um, those nitrogen, you know, kind of higher nitrogen type plants, leafy uh, type plants, even, um, you know, maybe some legume ferments like bean type things. Um, but I just change it as I go. And then when I get into flowering, I'm going like hard with the kind of sweets, uh, you know, melon, berry, you know, those kinds of FPJs or FFJs. 
So yeah, pretty much use them all, using them all the time. Oh yeah, yeah. If you could squish the humic out and then put it right back out there in the pile, and it'll just recollect. Yeah, you'll be good with that. And I, I like the if I can just let the humix drip if they're soggy enough, that's even better. But squeezing them is that's, that's fine too. Yes, thank yeah, we you. Appreciate Juan. that. Appreciate you. And like I said, man, we we don't necessarily want it to only be. I mean, it's obviously a cannabis related show, but I don't want everything to be about growing. Like, if you guys want to learn some of the other stuff, uh, ways to do certain things and not get in trouble, uh, I feel like Marco and I can share a variety of wisdom on that. Um, and like I said, man, there's a there's a highway on the East Coast, I ninety five. There's a reason why for certain people that is a famous, famous highway, uh, because a lot of people, especially uh, 10 years or more ago, uh, that's how they fed their families, uh, taking huge, huge risks, especially in some of those states driving through. Uh, my biggest worry was like Kentucky and Tennessee. Um, there's just always been states that give you, uh, for lack of the better word, like they would give you the bubble guts when you're driving through there. Uh, I would have Pepto-Bismol and stuff. I mean, there's just maybe that's a little too much information, but there was just always this nervousness and, and unease. And I cannot describe how uneasy things would be, especially if you got there and then you'd be in a motel room with people that you don't know when you're doing, uh, you know, we're not driving out there for little stuff. So uh, I just hope that we can share a lot of that stuff from this show as well and educate you guys. And, and hopefully um, even in the legal market, when you're driving things and you think, you know, in Oklahoma, they can, for the most part, uh, drive stuff, or at least they were able to. And uh, a lot of those guys, I don't think they understood how easily if people, the right kind of people figured out what they were doing, uh, how easy it is to get uh, taken for. Yeah, no doubt. No doubt. Biggest thing is, man, I've learned along the way and, and, and in life in general, you're always going to be better off when you just, just go by the rules. You know what I mean? It just makes it easier because it's always harder to get out of shit, you know, and and rules meaning if you say you're going to do X, Y, Z and go ahead and do X, Y, Z, you know, don't add a, a, a and X, Y, Z, you know what I mean? So it's a rules, you know, getting a plan, figuring out what you want to do, kind of sticking with it. Um, you know, I think that's key. Just, you know, these days, man, it's a lot. Uh, nobody, you, I mean, it should be a lot less risky for doing anything, you know, um, with the way the laws are going. And hopefully, man, just federal laws will just, will just end this whole stupidity and we can just only worry about the positives, you know, growing and, and, and helping people, you know what I mean? So. Well said. I got a YouTube, man. Um, I don't have a lot on there. I need to tighten up. I, I'll, I'll have to. I don't even remember what it is, sir. <laughs> I have to tighten up on my YouTube game. Yeah, there's a whole huge sea of YouTube, you know. I actually uh, need to go more YouTube because the pe problem people are having, man, is uh, IG. You just can't really like. It's hard to go back finding stuff, you know. It's, it's tough, you know. So, um, yeah, I'm, I need to step my game up. Figure out a good way to put my library together, I guess. No, and what I do want to seed sprout is um sprout them first, uh, whole, just like you would a corn or, or alfalfa. Once you see that sprout, then now go to your crush and then on down, you can either ferment from there. What I did was uh, you can crush, then add equal weight sugar make it like a fpj then when that fpj is done strain off then you can go vinegar with the out with the uh, acorns so i end up with an acorn vinegar acorn fpj with slash enzyme and, or you could just do the water blender at the sst style do you feel like you're gonna have more success if you're emulsifying that you know man that's kind of a debate I don't know, Brian, because some people say, and I asked this to, um, uh, asked, I've asked people this in the past, like when I first got into FPJs, like, well, they said, well, if it was, that was the case, then you just throw everything in a blender. 
you know what I mean? But what happens is you want only the sugar to pull out certain parts of it. And if you emulsify it, you get a lot more um, kind of contamination, if you will, more just random, just water or, you know, if it's leaves, you might get a lot of chloropla chloroplasts and all that, you know, the stuff you don't really want. So you want just the sugar to pull out. So I don't care. Right on. But I'm sure that it works both ways, man. Like everybody needs to understand what I say. I'm a guy that's like set in my ways. Like I'm going to tell you like, yes, this is how I do it. But I'm never going to tell you how you do it is wrong. Like I love seeing how other ways work. You know, I'm like, damn, oh, that works. Okay, that's dope. You know, yeah, awesome. you can pick and choose and kind of yeah. add it to your arsenal. You know? Yeah, I see Steve, man, just posted something with some potatoes in his uh in his stuff. I'm like, oh shit. Yeah, he's telling me. With that. Yeah, he feels like there's a little special sauce in, in with that. And I, when I visited him a couple of weeks ago when we were out in Vegas, uh, he was kind of, you know, letting us also know that green sand is something that he's really big on and, and adding uh, wood chips. Um, okay. So there's, you know, a, a pro doing it at the commercial level uh, that's letting you guys know in real time what he had to learn over years of kind of figuring out uh, some of the nuances of a living soil system uh, to maintain that is, uh, from his words, green sand and some wood chips. Yeah, green sand is dope. Uh, wood chips, I get uh, so much of that because I'm composting all uh, wood chips I get and stuff. So that that kind of is already in my soil, um, which is dope. But yeah, green sand is definitely key. And I tell you, man, I love those clays, man. Like I get, I, I, my wife is an, an esthetician, so she does like skincare, facials, mud, mass, mud, you know, all that. So she, I was looking around her shop and I saw these like special, like these clays. She had these really nice clays. Which were, green one it was called french green clay another one called rasul clay it was like reddish and then sea clay which was like a light gray I'm like damn these are sweet so i started reading up on them and uh when i ended up ordering all three and i actually used those as part of my soil blend now you know clays are huge they're, they're very big on a high cation exchange rate um which is important in uh, living soils and that what that means is uh it's just the ability for the soil or the or the or the um, substrate to hold uh, hold things. Um, if you picture like sand, sand can't hold anything. You know, it's got a the cation exchange is like basically low. Now, if you hold a handful of clay, clay can hold a lot of things in it. You know what I mean? And um, so that's that's one reason I love I love adding those clays, and they're also a good way to get uh, micronutrients into your into your soil too. yeah well said brother well what do you think man these are these are kind of interesting getting into the flow uh i feel like uh for one of my first shows buddy this was fantastic you know? <laughs> i know man i love it yeah. man uh i think we think we did good man hopefully people like it uh we keep we stay focused on the positive folks and if you didn't like it i guess keep it to yourself <laughs> exactly change the channel man we ain't that's right. Nobody's forcing you to watch this. That's for sure. That's right. Uh, again, shout out to Chad Westport. Uh, I don't think a lot of people realize all of the things that you have to do behind the scenes. Um, I, th I feel like Marco might even be learning with me of what it really takes to get guests, especially pe the cannabis uh, industry guests uh, are sometimes a little bit harder to get than you would think. Um, so I just I'm just grateful, man, that we're going to be working on this uh, together. And again, I want to educate on a variety of topics, help individuals uh, that might still live in that gray area. I just feel like there's a lot of things that you can learn to protect yourself, especially if you're feeding your family. So that's just oh, yeah. something else that I would love to give as a gift. Uh, if you guys have certain questions, uh, ways to do certain things, uh, I even used to dress up and I'm sure we'll get into all that. But uh, there's just a variety of other ways to be proactive on that as well. Uh, if you have your story straight, um, it's a, a lot easier to, to walk away from things. And especially if you're not smoking the whole way up I-95, which was another huge issue with a lot of my peers. Um, yes, that's a long ass drive, days and days to get done. But at the same time, uh, you know, the way I viewed it is we were at work and uh, we're not getting high at work. Grinder, got to be focused. Yeah, 100 <laughs> percent. Brother Chad, guys, Thank this, you, man. yeah, my pleasure. This has been awesome. I am going to go across the street to the lawn that I mow for my neighbor. I'm going to collect the leaves. I'm going to get some roly polies. They're going to start Dope. eating that. 
Yeah. It's gonna shit it out. I'm gonna put it in for my worms. It's gonna be a cycle before you know it. It's just gonna. It's not gonna stop. Yeah. Um, and then remember, you can take from right. You don't want anything to get out of control. Um, and sometimes that can happen with roly polies. Sometimes that can happen with red wigglers. Uh, but again, it's on you to maintain things as the farmer. That's right. It's exciting, guys. Thank you for dropping knowledge. And we're back next week. Yes, we sir. are. We're gonna be doing this every week on Wednesdays. Um, and we're hey yeah, like i said we've been playing this for a while so we're gonna run with it we got a dope guest for next week i'm not gonna say who it is yet uh but we're gonna let you know probably friday and uh next next week's show is gonna be awesome too y'all awesome all right well one piece of house cleaning before we go uh housekeeping we got another show tonight we're gonna go live on fcp02 uh seven o'clock on the west coast ten o'clock on the east coast and we are talking seed collections tonight, guys. And uh, we got some pretty fun people. Dave's not here, man. If you've ever been on one of the Future Cannabis Project uh, charity auctions, you know Dave. And Fresh Baked as well. He's got some rad genetics and he has shared. So that is tonight, uh, 7 p.m. on the West Coast. Other than that, we are out. Excellent, Chad. And I, again, sixty percent of it—I don't—I don't know. I'm throwing it out there, but it's got to be uh, part, more than fifty percent, in my opinion, is genetics. Uh, so taking the time to learn about who's really putting in the work, uh, so that you don't fall in the trap of spending a lot of money on what we call hype genetics. One hundred percent. Yes, that's 100. something we're going to add to the conversation. <laughs> How no to doubt. tell? Good to see All you, right. Chad. Thanks, Brian. We'll see you guys later. All right.